here. We'll be moving one over. Let these bowlers have a reasonable chance at one. DeRoche just let them dig this ball in. One, two, four. Waters. 310. Just too full on the three. Those baby splits are gettable. You got to put the ball one side or the other. But tough to fine tune that. DeRoche's got 91 through 9. Waters gets 10. Justin Waters 103 through 9. Chuck DeRozier's 91 through 9. Do I have another blip? I haven't had a blip recently. That's good. Craig, you had me worried in chat there. <laughs> Waters crossed over a little smidge, I suppose, but that's a great splash. 3-6. Roche has a 270. He's got two pieces of wood in front. There's one piece left in vertical. He might be able to play. But he plays the right side wood. It carries through. Nice shot. So he's going 11 on this one. 101 and a ball. Water spares as well. 113 and a ball. One last ball in box 10, and that'll conclude this string. His last ball is a good one. He's got eight. 109 for the string. Two spares in that second half to bring him up there. Boom, baby. Waters is a strike. First words that came to mind, that was a bona fide hammer. 123 on that bonus ball in the 10th. And that concludes string one. It looks like all the action is set. I think believe all bowlers will rotate, and we'll have string two in just a moment for you. Uh, See if I can get my score cam going. String two about to begin. Strike two starting now. Matt Harnett's underway. He's got the 3 6 to begin. This is Matt Rich on the left side. He's got the 3 6. Step on up here, Dan. I'd love to see it. Yeah, yeah. Look at that step. This will be a 10 boxer for both Matt Harnett and I presume Matt Rich. Whoop. Careful not to handle the mic too much, but it's tough to do. I put it up there for you. Rich got a 10. And do I finally have a score cam as we start our second of five strings, folks? Do I have good internet connection? Yes, I do. Excellent. All right. I just need to collect.
flick this on. How are we looking there? There we go. We got there our, we go. We got our Canadian score sheet going. All right, we have Matt Rich on lane 13. Excellent. And um, trying to see who's on lane 14. Uh, 14 is Matt Harnett. Matt Harnett, thank you. Yep. All right, so we start off Matt Rich and Matt Harnett, both are with 10 boxes. Ooh. Harnett with a nice uh, shot on his. Yeah, that was ball two. Second ball, thank you. That's what I'm looking for. Sorry, I, I had to climb up into the booth and get caught up here. Yeah, yeah, we're making it work. So uh, for those of you at home, this is Dan Castle, the Canopin Bowling Network. And uh, Matt Rich off to the left. And uh, we'll be have, a, have an open frame, and Matt Harnett on the right picks up a 10. So after two boxes, Harnett's at 20. And Rich picks up a single pin, so he's at a 9. He's at a, uh, 19, 19. 19 after, after three, two boxes. We're looking there good. Okay. There we go. Starting to get some semblance of normal. You're coming in. Okay, Harnett off onto the three pin, I believe. He's getting some late action, and he drops six, I see. Matt Rich on the head pin. Takes out eight, the uh, six pin last to fall. Yeah, that's right, Dan. Uh, Arnett's got the one, two, four, five. That five's wiggling back there. Yep, kind of the lambda lead, we call that. And a great shot on the, in, right in the right spot, and everything went, but the five, it just wrapped around there. Matt going for his spare. Attempt, he picks it up. Beautiful spare on the 310 pin. Took advantage of some wood. All right, coming into box four, Matt Rich is on the left is on a spare. Matt Harnett is all 10 so far with 30. And the first ball, he's in the left pocket, and that's a strike. First strike of this match. Nice. Matt Rich coming up on a spare fill. He's off onto the two pin. He just gets three in the fill. So he's got a bunch to shoot at. He's got the four horsemen right, the seven pin, the five pin, and the nine pin. And Rich is off to the right of the head pin. He takes out a few more. He's got three left. Checking my own audio balance. I think we're good, though. You sound good to me. Why, well, thank you. So do you. Lovely voice there. All right, so Matt Rich ends up with a seven box, and that puts him at 39 after four boxes. Matt Harnett coming up on his first of two balls for his strike fill. Well, when in Rome, got to use the Canadian notation, something like that. You see those half triangles for the spares and the solid squares for the strikes, just yep. like they've always done it. Yep. Always some minor cultural differences, and this is one that our U.S. Uh, watchers might find kind of interesting to see that different notation. Yeah, I can't not. Ah, uh, look. Matt Rich, or Matt Harnett on the head pin, a little full, takes out six in his first ball. He's left with the two four, seven, and eight pins. Ah, good lane. Three. Rich is waiting for the lanes to work. Yep. I, I'm going to add some big scores here. Brett Adams, 168 in that first string as Arnett picks that spare up. Beautifully Matt, done. He's all over it. Matt Nichols, 151. He was strong in mixed worlds, too. He's got 151 in his first one. Okay, Rich on his first ball is off on the three pin. Takes out four. Four horsemen left and the five and the eight. No wood to play with. And Matt is off on the two pin that time, so having trouble finding the head pin at the moment. Takes out everything but the one and the eight, so trying to close out with a 10 box and come back for a good half on the second. Oh, I see it. And picks up the 10, beautifully done. Took the ball from the head pin over to the eight, and now our second group of bowlers comes up. 10 for Rich, you said? Yep. You got it. 49 after five, and Harnett is at 60 plus a ball. So on the right now, we have Mike McIntosh, another US bowler. And Mike McIntosh uh, starts off with a seven drop, maybe a six drop, I can't see behind there. Um, yeah. Nope, seven, I can look at the live action. And in the meantime, Serge, Babin. Sir, uh, Serge um, Babin. Yep. Drop seven also. He 
He's shooting at the five, nine, ten. He just gets the nine. McIntosh picked up a spare. We see Mike McIntosh in many tournaments and events in Massachusetts. He's also quite an accomplished uh, solo musician. Okay, Serge picks up the mark too, or picks up the 10, sorry. Uh-oh, all so work there. Babin has a 10 box and only three in the fill for McIntosh. He's off onto the four pin, picks up the triangle on the left, but he's got the two rows on the right. Here comes Serge and Serge is off on the two pin. He gets a better leave. One, nine, 10, but there's some wood that may help him. Here comes McIntosh on his attempt for a spare. Takes out everything but the one, two. Wood behind the head pin's nice for Serge, let's see. If he hits a head pin, I think he's got it, and he does. Spare in a second for Serge Babin. And if I, if I have the names wrong, I'm, I apologize, but uh, some of the handwriting here is a little hard to read. McIntosh on the 10 attempt, and he gets it, so Mike McIntosh is at 23 after two. Serge Babbitt is at 20 plus a ball. Okay, McIntosh on the right, Serge Babbitt on the left. Lanes 13 to 14 here in Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. Serge is going to take the first ball, and he's on the head pin beautifully. Splat. And Ooh. Yeah, he breaks up the split, just the four and the seven. Not a bad outcome. McIntosh, a little fall on the head pin, gives himself a split. That's seven, eight, seven in a fill. Or no fill. So no fill, he's on time. I'm sorry, wrong guy. Babin has an eight fill, and he's. I'm getting a little squirrely with the score bat, Pat, in fairness. Yep. Um, so McIntosh Ooh. just off the object pin, not by much. And Babin looking for a 10, he gets a nine. 37 after three. McIntosh looking to close out with a 10 bucks here. Shooting at the two and the 10. That'd be something. Ooh. Oh, he made a great bid on that one. Yeah. The two went over there, went around the 10, and that's about as good as you can shoot at that. All right, coming into box four for the second bowlers in our three bowler lineups here on this singles qualifying rounds. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'm going to move this thing. There you go. That's good. So Sir, that? Serge Babbitt on the head pin and picks up a little bit of an ugly split. Three on the left, triangle on the right. Wood to may help. It's makeable. Mike McIntosh off on the two pin. The footwork's half the battle. I got to show that. And um, Babbitt making a shot at that. Nope, not going to go. Takes out everything but the six and the ten. McIntosh, it looks like he's shooting at the... Ooh. McIntosh drops a bomb. And there's a strike. That's a good way to close out the half. And he walks away at 49 and a two ball fill. Yeah, it looks like my internet's gonna go in and out sometimes. And uh, nine box for Serge. So 56 at the halfway point in this game. Yeah, well, that's, oh, that one's my fault. I gotta do better with the uh, All right, now coming up for the third bowlers in this group. On the right, Justin Waters bowls in Millis, Massachusetts, uh, along with Greg and I and, and a lot of the other bowlers here. And on the left is Steve Colbert. Waters starts out with a nine drop, as does Colbert. Steve is from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Justin looking for a spare and he's got it all over it. And Steve also picks up the mark. So matching marks in the first box for these two bowlers. So we'll talk about Steve for a second. He's got an average of 124. High single, 198, very respectable. 470 triple, 705 for four. Bulls out of Woodside Bowlerama. He's been bowling for 41 years. All right, coming back to the action. Justin Waters on the right. Justin's on the head pin. It's a split, and so does Steve Corbett. They get opposite splits. Oh, he's going to get another one, maybe another one. It's going to go. Yeah, no, it isn't. So on the fills, Waters seven, or six, five, I'm sorry. It's hard to see around the bowlers. And Corbett, six in his fill. 
And uh, both bowlers do not make their spares. Both had splits. Waters looking to pick up the 6-10 for a 10 box. They picked up just the 10, a 9 box. And Corbett closes with an 8 box. So at two boxes in, Steve Corbett's at 24, and Justin Waters is at 24. So I don't have Justin's statistics up here, but I know some of them. Justin until recently. Well, no, he didn't hold a house record, but he does hold a house record for top five in our lanes in Millis, which is 736, if I recall correctly. I may be off by a few pins. He, Justin was the champion of last year's A division Atlantic Candlepin single store. So Justin dropped six on his first ball. He's got the four horsemen right to shoot at. Steve dropped eight, and Justin picks up the spare on that. Steve's shooting at the two and the six, and great effort on that, but it didn't go. I think six Waters stuck around. Yeah, Waters had the five pin back there as well. That was a good shot. Oh, the f I didn't see that. I'm sorry. We're a little bit away from the action. We're kind of alternating between a video screen and watching the bowlers directly. <laughs> Our executive producers say, like, go get binoculars or something. <laughs> yeah, and I'm old and don't have great vision. Yeah. So, for, uh, what it, for what it's worth, I'm seeing them fine. Let me know if you need a spot. There's also this thing. But yeah, yeah, that's what I'm using. I'm using a monitor mostly, but I try to keep it. And you don't have a delay here, so that's good. So a lot of times when we use a monitor, there's a bit of a delay. So water's coming up on a spare fill in box four. First ball is... Just uh, five. So five in the fill. Mm -hmm. Colbert drops six, and he's left with the right-handed four horsemen in Millis, Massachusetts. We call that the Kamrowski special for a bowler there named Rick Kamrowski. Justin, great effort on that spare. He's all over the object pin, and Colbert almost got that from the back door. The First two pins went on a, the one and the three, but the and the ten, and then the six stuck around. Water shooting at a seven ten split with no wood, and uh, it's going to be an eight box and a ten box for Steve. So four boxes in. Steve Colbert is at forty four. Justin Waters forty seven. Forty seven. Mm -hmm. Still getting squirrely. Like that. Come on now, settle down. All right, Waters coming into box five to first complete the first half of this game two. Like trying to control your car in route two on the way up. And drop seven for Waters and five for Colbert. And Colbert is looking at what we call the Cleary in Massachusetts. Four horsemen plus the nine pin, or it's opposite. Waters has a six, ten, and four pin there. He tries to make that wood work, does not. Yeah, Both bowlers are going to be absent to spare this. Yeah, game. Waters has been getting a little splitty, unfortunately, here. It's unfortunate. He's, uh, I think those five fills also are both splits. So he's having a rough go of it, this string, even though he's been generally accurate as ever. And Justin ends up with an eight box, so 55 half. And Colbert with an eight box also, and that gives him a 52 half. All right, so we're coming up into the second half of this game two of the qualifiers of the first shift. And coming back up on lane 13 is Matt Rich from Massachusetts. And coming up on lane 14. Uh, we're back to Matt Rich. Okay, so Matt Rich and on 14 is... Hey, 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 you're plugged in. Why are you this close? Oh, taking plugging problems. Hold on. Oh, okay. Matt Harnett, thank God. you for getting the names. God's sake. All right, so Matt Harnett starts to the seven. He's got a split, the one, two, ten. Matty Rich, two, six split with a lot of wood in between there. Harnett tries to cut the head, the ball from the head pin to the ten and the one pin into the two, and it didn't go. Matt Rich picks up the mark. Made it look easy. That was a seven fill for Harnett on that, right? Sorry. That, that was a seven fill. And an eight box. So a 75 at six for Matt Harnett. Matt Rich is at 59 in a ball. So Matt Harnett coming up on box seven. And he's just off the head pin. Ooh. And uh, the three pin went off spot. Splat. Matt Rich is going to have six. Is it going to be seven? He's thinking about it, but no. It's six fill in his spare. Harnett is left with a one, 
three and a half, seven and ten pin. And he's on the three. Beautifully, he's helicoptering the pin around, picks up the head pin, but the seven remains. Now we're seeing a few splashback hits here in uh, Fair Lanes. Oh, Matt makes, Rich makes a great bid on cutting that over. It doesn't get over to this four, seven. So Arnett has a 10 box. So he's at 85 at eight. Matt Rich going for a 10. And all over it, 75 at eight for Matt Rich. So this is the second to five qualifying strings and two shifts as well. So we'll have a whole new cast of characters shortly after this. And then we'll have the playoff knockout rounds. Whoop, my video froze, didn't it? Oh, gosh. Why is my video? Oh. All right, I'll keep on the audio. Matt Harnett in the left pocket on the one, two. And is that six pin going to make a strike? It does not. So he's got this, just this nine drop six pin left alone. Matt Rich off on a two pin, does not get a punch out, but only unfortunately takes three pins. Oh, that's better. There you go. <sighs> Arnett on the spare attempt. He's on the wood, it's good. Matt Rich trying to get this cluster to go. And he picks up a couple. He still has, he still has six left. So the six, seven, nine, ten with a little wood on the right. And gets the six and the nine to go. So Matt Rich has an eight box. 83. Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as I can yep. type properly. Confirm spare for Harnett in the last one. I was fixing. Yeah, Harnett put up a spare. All sorts of fires going on back here. Yeah, he had a nine drop and he oh, put up a nice like spare. I got gotcha. you. And yep. he puts eight on the fill. Matt Rich looking for a nice ball on the head pin. It's had full. Breaks up the split, so only the four and seven are left. Harnett is shooting at the one, two pin. And all over it, so another spare for Matt Harnett. So he put eight in his fill. And he got another spare. Nice. Matt Rich has got a spare. Picked up the four, seven clean. So matching spares in the ninth box. Matt Rich at 83 after eight, 93 in a ball. Matt Harnett at 113 plus a ball. Okay, and coming into the fill. Okay, Harnett ready to throw his ball. Here we go. On the head pin, solid on the head pin. And we picked up an eight fill, only the five and seven left. Matt Rich off on the two pin again. It's a break. Got another pin moving there. I don't think it's gonna take out anything. So an eight fill for Matt Rich. 101. And he's at 101. Matt Harnett's at 121 at nine. Harnett shooting at the 5-7 and gets just the 7. Matt Rich shooting at the 1-8. Looks like a little wood in between there, so I think he's got a shot at this. If he can hit either side of the head pin. He hits it, but a little light, and it doesn't carry the 8 pin. Harnett finishes with a 10 box. 130. And Rich looking to close out that 8 pin. He's got some wood in front of it. No choice but to use it. And Matt throws a nice smooth ball right down there to take a 10 box. 10, yep. And uh, Matt Rich closes the game at 111. Matt Harnett at 131. Okay. So now we're coming into the second half for our number two bowlers in this round. Mike McIntosh and Steve Colbert. No, I'm sorry, Serge Babbitt. We're getting there. We'll get all these names down. Just, we're just starting here. So McIntosh threw his first ball, just took out the six and the nine. Coming in for his spare. He's a little bit ahead of pace of his oh God. person on the other bowler. He ends up with a nine box. All right. That's a nine. Serge. Video. Drops just three to start with. So McIntosh put nine on his strike. Holbert goes wide to the right, but he gets some breaks there, and McIntosh puts up a 10 box. So Mike McIntosh is 68 after six. Okay. Serge Babin looking for a 10. He gets a 10, and that gives him 66 after six boxes. Great pinning. Serge has had only 
left only two pins up so far. McIntosh has uh, had a seven box in the mix, but he's got the strike. Mike McIntosh drops seven. Three six seven is the there's three six ten is the lead. Babbitt off to the left a little bit, and he leaves a one two seven eight ten. McIntosh on a spare attempt, no problem. Picks up that row of three like it was easy. Brett Babbin making a valiant effort on that. Comes into the one three pocket, carries some wood over to the left, but it doesn't pick up the seven and eight. So he will have an open box as we call it in the US and Canada. I believe that would be called Not. differently. So, <laughs> um, but he beautifully cuts over and picks up the 10 with just a seven and eight. Yeah, very It's good. an awesome shot. I saved my voice by not yelling. McIntosh puts seven on the fill. He's got the one, seven, eight left. Babbitt off onto the two pin. Avoids a half Worcester, we call it in mass. Picks up three pins. Just called punching out here. McIntosh trying to pick up that tough spare, but just picks up the back pin. Left for the one, seven. Babin picks up a couple. McIntosh with us with an eight box. Ball coming back. Will it catch anything? Doesn't look like it. So eight box for Mike McIntosh. And a nice, nicely done 10 box by Steve Babin. Serge Babin. I'm sorry, I'm getting there. And yeah, only two pins left standing for Serge. Yeah, he's done a great job. He's last three or ten boxes, then a nine, a ten, a nine, a spare, a ten. Beautiful pinning here. So Serge is coming up on lane 13 now with his first ball in box nine, and he goes to the right, takes out seven. Greg will give us some interesting stats here momentarily. Yeah, Serge Babin had a 147 in the last one. Other top scores, Donnie Cox 149, Tal Flyer 144, and I mentioned uh, Brett Adams and Matt Nichols with 168, and Matt Nichols at the 151. All right, back to the action. Mike McIntosh threw his first ball on the head pin, but he's left with a two and two split. Sorry, Dan had to get it in edgewise. That's okay. We all learn how to talk fast in this business. <laughs> um, be good for legal disclosures. So Serge has a nine box, 95 after nine, and McIntosh has a nine box also, and that puts him at 102 after nine. Both bowlers looking to close out big to have competitive scores here. Okay. Serge, on the head pin, he gets the spread eagle. Three and three. Really tough spare to make. About a 1%, 1.5% chance of that going. McIntosh, he's also very full on a head pin. He also gets a tough split, but a little easier than Serge's. So he, Mike has a three, six, four, seven. Serge tries to go to the right. He goes a little too far to the right, takes out just a six pin. And Mike McIntosh picks up a couple. Surge closes with an eight box, and so he's at 103. Mike McIntosh. Has an eight box too, and he's at 110. McIntosh at 126 in the last one, so he ends up with 236. Uh, Serge Babin 147 and 103 makes 250 through two, 125 average. Okay, the third bowlers in this match. Justin Waters on the right. Steve Colbert on the left. Justin Waters, first ball. Have we got, the, pronu have we got the pronunciation of Steve's name or do we need to go ask? Um, I sure? Yeah, that's a good question. I'm, I'm assuming it's Colbert, but I'm not 100% positive, so no offense, please, if I got it wrong. Waters drops six. Colbert drops three. Justin is beautifully on the head pin, picks up the mark. Col uh, it's pronounced Colbert, Paul tells us. So uh, Steve, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Justin did not get a mark on that one. He left the seven pin. I couldn't see through him. Yep. My video froze as well again. Yeah, that's kind of why I was looking at the bullish rather than the video. And um, now you got you got to nudge me on that because our, our fine folks out there are also getting 
frozen up. So. Yep, so the six box for Steve Colbert and a nine box for Justin Waters to start the second half. Yeah. Neither was on a fill. Yeah, so if, you're, Justin, if you're watching that, let me know if that freezes yep. up again. My cable's like, I'll have to get that resituated maybe after this string because this is so starting to get outrageous. Justin with a nine, Colbert with a six. Putting it mildly. And uh, both have solid head pin hits here. Justin drops nine, the eight pin remains. Okay, so Colbert had a six, Justin had a nine. Thank you. Yeah. On sure. a spare attempt in box seven, Justin gets robbed by the wood. He capped the wood, deflected the ball over. Colbert picks up the mark off the wood, a spare in this seventh for Steve Colbert. Water's looking for a 10 box. And he's all over it. Just had to get that wood out of the way. Was not a friend to him. So box through seven boxes. Steve Colbert's at 68 plus a fill ball. And Justin Waters is at 74. I'm doing this notation right. First time. Although I'll actually use this Canadian notation on spare time recreations. Uh, uh, horizontal score sheets. I'm probably the only weirdo who does that. Okay, Waters. Oh, it wants to be a strike, but it's not a strike. Colbert drops nine. Nice fill. Nice fill on that, as Greg said, and uh, so that helps him out a lot. Puts him up to 77 at the eighth box. At the seventh box, I'm sorry. Waters picks up that spare, no problem. Wood, wood was definitely helpful. Yeah. And here comes Steve trying to pick up that single pin. And he's all over it, no problem at all for him. So matching spares in the eighth for our bowlers, Steve Colbert and Justin Waters. Now both coming on to fill balls. Waters is first, he's at 84 plus whatever this ball gives him. Had a little stumble there, but picks up eight in his fill. And Steve just picked off the three pin. Is only a one in the fill. No break at all there. Justin shooting at the eight. And it, I don't know, that, that's not quite right. Let's see what it is. That's a, oh, a four and a ten, nine, but they're gone. Another spare for Waters. Colbert makes a great bit on that, but just misses hitting the head pin, which he needed to do. Dropped. Everything but the one six ten. So trying to close out with a ten box here, or at least a nine. A lot of us would go for the safety on the right and take out just the six and the ten. Forget trying to cut it, but we'll see what he does. That's what he's going to do. He goes through the hole. So a seven box for Steve Colbert. This is the last pair of bowlers in string two of the first shift. String three will happen just after this. I think there's a few lanes that are a bit behind, so there'll be a bit of delay while the transition takes place. And then we'll be back with this qualifier action. Don't forget the playoffs. That's where the real, really big excitement's gonna start in just a moment. Okay, Justin Waters, lane 14, box 10, game two. And he's got a punched out, but he picked up, it looks like. Two, I see four, he's got the. Yeah, it's a four fill. So Waters puts four in his spare, puts him at 106 at nine. Colbert, Colbert dropped six. He has a one, three, seven, nine. Waters went wide to the right on, or left on that one. Colbert missed everything. Yeah, left out of Justin's hand. Yep. So this is an uncharacteristically low score for Justin and for Colbert as well. And Justin picks up a 10 box, cuts that nicely. Colbert ends up with an eight box. And so our final scores here, 116 for Justin Waters and 103 for Steve Colbert. Let me see if I could get these scores real quick. Uh, their overall scores at the moment. Um, Colbert had 119 previously, so the 103 brings him up to 222. Waters 116 previous was, have a look here. Where, where's Waters? There we go, 123, uh, 239 for him. I also did not announce a second pair of scores, which was uh, 
The search map and I had that. I mentioned his. No, I did mention all the scores. I did a good okay. job. Okay. You're um, doing a good job. What I'm probably going to do is I'm going to mess with the cable a bit. This will freeze the video on purpose this time. Um, but I'm just going to try and make it so that, well, I hand you these score sheets carefully for the next rotation of bowlers. Remember, they okay. rotate one right, of course. And I'm just going to fuss with the camera. This is going to disconnect it, but I'm going to just make it so that absolutely no further disconnects, or so help me, happen. And I'm going to hop off on the mic for a minute and see if Paul wants to do the next round, but it looks like he's busy, so I may be going to the next round, too. Yeah. What our plan oh, is... Oh, this cable is a right mess, man. There we I go. Was, I was stressed trying to get this all set up. Yeah, it looks like Paul's busy, so um, that's fine. Our plan is, and it's not going to be perfect, um, essentially Paul and I will alternate on the play-by-play. -play. Um, at some point, we may both be on the mic yeah. with Greg. At some point, Greg may take a break. and Maybe. Maybe. At some all point, right. Greg may do play-by-play, -play. so it's going to alternate a little bit. And um, I did a play by play like already. I'm good. Don't worry about me. Yeah. So, so we're all good on this one. And uh, it's yeah. a great event. Um, it's my first time being here. I think you've been here before. <laughs> and um, I've only been as far as Fredericton. I've never been up here. Fantastic place. Like 24 lanes. We're up here in this there's like 36 in lanes. 36. Oh, yeah. There's another room. Oh, excuse me. Oh, yeah. That's right. There it is. Right over there. Yeah. It's a beautiful place. They have a nice restaurant attached to it uh, a patio which probably is not going to get a lot of use right now because it's a bit chilly out um, friendly Canadian welcomes to everybody and um, it's just, just a, a great place a lot of people here packed house and from what they tell me tomorrow when the team's events start it's going to get even more packed oh big time yeah I mean, singles is absolutely a marquee event in its own right, and the playoffs are going to get real good in a second here. But, yeah, teams, the raucousness is just going to go off the charts. It's going to be amazing. I mean, yeah, it's a big house. The acoustics don't travel super far, but, like, when you get everyone yelling, it's going to be a good time. Glad we got the headset mic so we can hear each other anyway. It's a, it's a big deal, you know. I, have, I myself have a bit of yeah. a hearing problem, and so sometimes in loud crowds it's tough to do. Mm. So... We just finished the second. Mm -hmm. We're playing producer and commentator. Third, second, yeah. Oh, that's right. I did. What does it look like when I do that full? Oh wait, no, I took it away. That's right. I was smart. I'm smart occasionally. Only occasionally. Let's see if I can get this going. There we go. I had one one of uh, my yeah. earphones backwards. I didn't know it. No wonder it hurt. Yeah. Really appreciate you all staying here. This is probably going to be a less polished version of the broadcast, but, you know, we got a lot of great bullets we want to showcase all the same, and we're going to do our absolute best for that. So I'm while we're... I'm a, I'm a little ashamed. I'm going to be honest. I, I, w I wish this was going better off the jump. I, but we're making do. So some of the other action going on here is the... TikTok girls are here. Yes. And they're going to be live at some point. I'm going to join them at some point, too. And they're going to be mic oh, yeah? miking up some bowlers. Yep. You're going to be a TikTok girl? Yeah. I, I, Lady I, TikTok. I often uh, join them for a few minutes and do a little play-by-play -play for them. So that's a whole different live stream. Um, but they get a big viewership when they, they come up. They've had up to hundreds of thousands watching a match simultaneously. Yeah. They don't really do play-by-play. -play. They talk a lot about the game, um, help people who are unfamiliar with the game. Uh, learn more about it. Candlepin, as everybody who's probably watching is well aware of, is a fun, exciting sport, mostly in eastern New England in the United States and eastern Canada, the Maritime Provinces, as we are in right now in New Brunswick. The bowlers are getting set up to start game three. And uh, so Matt Rich and his uh, compadres will be over on lane 14 this time, and then coming up on lane 13... Can you help me key in some names uh, kindly? Oh, that's right, the Ethernet. That was the other. Yeah, I'm trying to find the the. Um, I'm gonna cut this Ethernet real quick while I try and get some slack. Try right. and prevent some disconnects in this department as well. Because that's also been my bugaboo. I've been freezing up and everything wants to. No, no. All right. So. Good craftsman never blames us. We will be reason. continuing on lane 14 with Matt Rich. And uh, who else was on that lane? Uh, Justin Waters. Babin and Colbert, right? And uh, oh, that's right, Babin, Babin and Colbert. And on lane 
13 coming up now. The, and I'm not sure of the order yet, but I'll get you the order in a second as soon as I see what the bowlers are doing because I think Paul's walking around with the clipboard that I wrote that all down on. All right. So we need to obtain from him the actual orders. I tried to flag him. We'll get him. And uh, those of you who know, who know Paul knows that he's running around a lot when he's in here. Well, if that's Scally on 12, he's going to come to 13. Who else is that? Well, on, on 13, who, or, or on 13, we're going to have oh, Bernie Colbert, Colbert uh, Tim Hassert, Hazard. and uh, Rich Beveridge Sr. And uh, not sure I know Tim Hassert. He's a Tim Hazard, a runner-up. Yeah. Yeah, he's a Massachusetts bowler. And first one up. Says Bernie on the score sheet, so it's Bernie Corbett, and he actually handed me the sheets in the right order. I need so a, I need a spill. Corbett, Colbett, Colbett. Yep. And so Matt Rich strikes on his first ball, drops a bomb of a strike. Matt, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, we both have bowl in the same leagues in Massachusetts, and. Uh, He's very involved. He has uh, a couple of young kids who bowl in the kids' lead with my granddaughter. So we see each other frequently. And uh, Bernie, first ball, he dropped five. And it looks like uh, four horsemen plus uh, nine, seven or eight. And that was his third ball. He just has a nine box. So Matty Rich coming up on... Lane 14 with a strike fill in, a, in play here. Oh. And is it going to be a double? And oh, Matt yes. Rich has a double. Very good. All over that one. Not much doubt at all. The seven pin was the last to go, and it went. Uh-oh. Better not lose internet now. Yeah. <laughs> Matt's coming on strong. He was, uh, we were at the lanes together yesterday. And uh, he was practicing. He put in a couple of practice rounds. Okay. He has, he's got the Bernie he's drops off the it. 10, picks up just the 10. Okay. I can't understand. Those, those are the ACSD stats he's saying. Okay. Okay. That helps him. Okay. All right. I'm going to set this over here for you. All right. Take a look at 14 now. We got okay. Matt. We're back on 14. Matt Rich looking for a triple. As soon as Bernie wraps up this second box, and he closes with a five for 14 after two. Now, Matt Rich looking for a triple here. Wouldn't that be great? Nice smooth ball coming in a little to the right. No late action. And seven drop on his first ball. No triple this time, but still not a bad fill. So his first box is a 27 with that strike. Followed by strike, followed by seven. Now he's looking to pick up the one, two, four. Bernie on the head pin and has a split. Matt will just have an eight in his second ball. So an eight fill in his second strike, 45 after two. Bernie is looking to pick up the three, four split. A little bit of an unusual one and some wood in between. I don't think it's going to help. And cuts the pin but goes the wrong way. Matt Rich with an eight box. So Matt and Bernie with the 10 box. So Matt has 53 after three. And Bernie Colbert, a 24 after three. Matt Rich coming into box four. Another strike maybe. Had a good looking ball and a 10 pin stays. That was an end of seven. He's got a seven, 10 split. Lots of wood there that may help him make this. That can be easy, that can be hard. Depends all on the wood, whether it's there, whether it's lined up. Bernie, first ball. He's off in the woods into the six pin, but he gets some backdoor action as just the diamond in the front. Oh. Matt trying to pick up the 7 10 split. Oh, he makes a great bid on that, but it doesn't Give me a look at that. So just the seven remains. Bernie trying to pick up his first mark in this game, and. He's on the object pin, but the diamond doesn't go. Matt looking for a 10 box, and here it is. 10 box for Matt Rich, 63 after four. Bernie Colbert matching 10 boxes, so he's at 34 after four. 
Matt's got a good half going here. No, 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 it's Corbett, Corbett. Is it Corbett? Yep. I'm sorry, Bernie, if you hear this recording. Uh. It, the handwriting looked like an L, not a R. Matt Ridge drops five on his first ball. That's three on the right, two on the left. Bernie Corbett. Corbett? Yep, that's Corbett, it. Corbett, got you it. got it now. Okay. We got it now, I should say. I know that's a lot right. of Corbett's back home. And Matt's open. Bernie has a great attempt on that one, two, eight, ten, I believe it was, or one, three, eight, ten, but it leaves the eight pin. And again, sorry about some of the names. We know some of the bowlers very well. I bowl in competition with many of these guys, but some of the uh, new people to me. So hopefully we'll get to know over the week. Matt closes with a nine box, Bernie with a ten box. 72 half for Matt. Very good start to this third game for Matt. Little strike load up well. All right. All right. Now Tim Hayser. Yep. Um, who's a spectacularly good bowler back home. And uh, Serge Dabin, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Serge, first ball, game three. And drop seven. Is it going to be eight? Is it not going to be eight? It's a four, seven, nine. Here comes Tim. On the left on lane 13 is Tim has Hacer. And Tim is on the three pin. It's a little bit of an ugly mess there. One, two, seven, eight, six, ten. I don't do them in order. I do them yeah. left to right or from the middle. Yeah. All right, look, Serge waiting for Mike McIntosh on lane 15. Now he's trying for the spare attempt. <laughs> Going to try to pick up the wood, kick it over, I imagine. And he goes into the hole. Tim with his tough leave. Ooh, he's on a two pin leave, so one six ten. Tim Hazer mostly at a, a Western Mass. Uh, no Angel or Jacques making the trip. Jacques, that adorable. Ange Ange dog. Angel's here. Oh, he is? Yep. Oh, wonderful. But I'm assuming Jacques didn't make the trip. Nice no, ja Jacques is their dog. Yeah, of course, of course. And uh, no, he didn't. Um, and I actually talked to Angel before this round a little bit because oh, yeah? I really wanted to bring my dog, but our car was pretty full. And he said that there's a lot involved in crossing the dog over the border in terms of not only making sure the shots are all done, but also you have to have a check by a vet here in Canada and possibly quarantined up for three days. So oh, gosh. not really doable. Even um, if we're here for the week still. Yeah, but I'm not going to do that. I'll let my dog stay home with family. So um, they have been closed out with a 10 box. Tim with a nine box, we're on the second box, and Babbitt, miss, Babbitt misses, I keep saying Babbitt, I don't mean to, misses the spare Ooh, attempt. Tim Hazer picks up the spare off the wood, cuts it right to, or left to right. I had right to left. That it? was a tough spare, and Mike ba or Serge Babbitt with a 10 box. Wood comes off the right side wall, it goes into the three pin, and then into the two, four, seven. Fantastic. Beautiful spare. Thank goodness the camera's rolling. That's, That's what makes a top bowler. He's making those tough shots. Uh, scores real quick. Brett Adams uh, had that 168 previous. 119 last, 287. He's uh, top of the shop right now with a 143 average. I'm just going to run these down. Uh, we'll watch for spares. Joey Lister. Uh, Joey Lister, 166 in the second. So he's now up to 283. Eight fill for Hazer, 27. Uh, Tim Soucy, we saw that 153, 280. Uh, Matt Schultz. 166 of his own, 276. Donnie Cox on 267. Devin Brooks, 266. Carl Witham, 266. Austin Barnes, 262. Glenn Pinson, 261. Uh, there's still a lot of great scores in here. Freddie Toffelmeyer, 256. Uh, help me out with the scores here for you. Don't mind. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, Tim ended up with, a, I believe, a 10 box. Uh, Might have been a spare, and I missed that. I was looking at the stats here with you. Cable clipped out. Shoot. So we'll look up at the score sheet. And I can't tell. I, mean, I, have, I have Babbitt on. Does that say nine or seven? Yeah, he had a 10, 10 by seven on his first ball. Acer, that was a spare. So that's a nine fill on his spare in the third box. Oh, Sorry thank you. About that. I took my eyes away for a second. You can't do that. Yeah, I got I to gotta read these scores out too, but yeah. All right, so Acer dropped nine. Surge. Drop seven. He's going for his third ball now. Tim's waiting for the wood to settle down. He picks up a 10 box for Surge. 
Tim trying to pick up a second, third consecutive spare. Yeah, 39 through four for Serge. I have got it right now. Babin again. All right, we're Babin again's pinning well. And Tim Hayser with three marks in a row. Very nice. Tim Hayser bowls up from, is from Chicopee, Massachusetts. He has um, an eye, uh, average right now 122, career high average of 125. Babin with a ball over on the three pin, and he's getting some late action. Tim's got to do a reset. Tim's high single is a 191 high triple 445, high 5683. And he bowls out of Canal Lanes in Southampton, Mass, and Agawam Bowl in Agawam, Mass. Oh, nice shot. Good wood shot. He's been bowling since he's three years old, Tim Hayser has been. That's why those child youth leagues are so important. Babbitt spares 2 4 8 10 with wood. Nice shot. I, I've got an oddball window here. Oh, do you? Oh, wow. All right. So Hayser puts in six in his fill. All right. Why? Let Dan see the match. There we go. I got to see it. I can see the bowlers in front of me, but it's really helpful to see the video. Yeah. And now um, it's laggy as heck for some reason, but yeah, Hayser. Um, like it's uh, laggy is okay because then I got a replay. So Hayser misses a spare opportunity, and has just a seven box. So he puts six in the fill, mm -hmm. and has a seven box. So six in the fill would give him. 62 after four and with a seven box, Tim Hayser sits down with a 69 half. Nothing to be ashamed of with that. Nice half. All right, so now. On All the right, right, who's the newcomer on 13? The newcomer on 13 is Rich Beverage Senior. Ah. Beverage just like the drink. And we see Steve Colbert again on lane 14, drops eight. Rich Beverage starts with three. He's off on the four pin. So there's a double row. Now Steve is shooting at the five and dime, the five ten split. Yeah. Beverage Jr. has been on the Beverage Jr. I just hesitate to uh, I, I, I open for that box. Yeah. And uh, I hate Rich, Rich Beverage uh, went wide. And a nine box for Steve Colbert to start game three. Rich Beverage. Oh, there we go. There he did. He, he made the adjustment he needed to do, put it in the right-hand pocket, and dropped the rest of the pins minus the five pins. So a nine box for Rich Beverage Sr. Nice nice comeback on that. That's what you got to do. You got to worry about the next ball, not the last one. The last one didn't go right. Now you just work on what the consequences were. And he did that well. Steve Colbert, lane 14, box two. He gives a little kick, but he gets the spread eagle, got the bird. Beverage, good ball, takes out eight, and has the six and the nine with some, what I think is attractive wood. Come on, you were both hit. They're both wiggling, but they don't want to fall down. All right, Colbert trying to spare the spread eagle. What an attempt that was. He cut. It's right three down and headed a pin over to the seven pin, but the two and the four stayed around. And in the meantime, Rich Beveridge got robbed by the wood again. Harsh miss for, for Beveridge. I mean, uh, the wood's out front is always tricky. Maybe he could have hit it a little more to the right. Maybe it would have jammed in, but He still. went straight at it and it looked good. He picked up the 10 and a nine box for Steve Colbert. So I thought he hit it perfect, but sometimes the wood does things to you that you just – Look at it and go, what? And that's where the profanities come into the game sometimes. Squeeze me? All right. Um, Sorry, pardon my French. Six drop for Steve Colbert. Six drop for Rich Beverage Sr. Ooh, that would swerve just behind a Colbert's shot. This is epic, but almost took it anyway. Well, we got some good water action over in Rich Beverage's lane, but he still left the one and the nine, so both left their head pin. Third ball. And uh, that's the only one standing for Steve Colbert. So a nine box for Steve, and well, Rich got the head pin, but it's a nine box for him because only the nine pin remains. We never want to leave just the head pin up on the third ball, but it happens sometimes. 
sometimes I have an estranged relationship with a head pin. I say we're two strangers passing in the night. I hasten further to add that Beveridge Jr. is in the field. He's on uh, 20, uh, yeah, 203 right now. Beveridge Sr. is on 209 through the first two. So to introduce Rich Beveridge, he's from Rockland, Maine. Has an average of 117, a high single of 172, a high triple of 418. Bowls out of Oakland Park. Bowling 35 plus years. And both bowlers just punched out a spread eagle. But Rich Beveridge also left the nine pin. Steve Colbert took out the right half of that. Rich is trying to get something going and he's through the hole, not where you want to be on that, but just by a little. He was trying to make something come off the wall on the left. Harsh game of inches. Centimeters, I should say. And I think that's a six box for, for Steve Colbert. And um, is there a pin back there? There is. The eight pin was hiding back there, and it is a four, four for Rich Beveridge. So, right so neither of them very happy with that box. So now we come into the fifth box, and they're both hoping to pick up a good mark to make up for that. Oh, I'm mixing the pages. That's not good. That's all right. Colbert, nice solid ball, but he's off on the three pin. Beveridge is on the head pin. And Colbert is shooting at the 1, 2, 9, 10. Beveridge is shooting at the 2, 4, 6, 10. Great effort by Steve Colbert. He's got a late mover there. Is he going to get it? He's going to touch it, but it's not going to go. Colbert picks up the left hand, too. Or Beveridge, I'm sorry, mixed up the names again. And for the 10, Steve Colbert's got it clean, and Rich Beveridge has a 10 box. So at the halfway point, the bowlers are Rich Beveridge, 42, and Steve Colbert, 43. All right, back to our first bowlers in this round. Matt Rich on the left, right. For that double strike. Bernie Cor Corbett on the left. Correct, it's Bernie, yep. Yep, okay. and it's Corbett. And it is Corbett, not Colbett. So, my error, ours. but whoever took that down. No, no, it's ours. The L looks like, the R looked like an L, that's all. It happens. Try reading my chicken scratch sometimes. All right, Matt Rich, who had a solid first half with the 72, and. Uh, oh, tip. Not oh, that my way, goodness. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the five pin didn't cooperate. Bernie is uh, leaving just the five pin. Matt's looking at just the nine pin, which should have gone if the world was fair. But it didn't. Picked up the 10 pin. So that puts Maddie at 82 after six. And um, Bernie looking at a 10 box as well. So, Fourth straight. Yeah, he's uh, he had that tough five box in the second. But other than that, it's been all nines and one nine and four tens. So solid pinning from him. Matt Rich coming up in box seven with 82 at six. He is on the head pin solid. Can't break up the split though, and Bernie is also on a head pin, but he, both bowlers end up with splits. Matt's got the six and the seven. He's got some wood there that could be really interesting. He's gonna try to cut it over. And oh, nice. Picks it up, nicely done. Nice precision shot by Matt. Now Bernie is coming up with the two, four, seven, ten, and he picks that up nice and clean. He cuts Cut. the two over into the ten, so spares for both bowlers. Jumped the wood, didn't even need it. That's a great shot. That was beautiful. Both very precise shots. So at the seventh box, we're at 64 plus a ball for Bernie Corbett and 92 plus a ball for Matt Rich. And Matt puts on that spare. Just three, he goes off to the six pin, the ball came out a little bit, went to the right. Bernie looking for a nice fill here. And uh, he goes off to the left on the four pin, but he gets a break and puts five in the fill. Matt looking at four horsemen left plus three in a row behind it. And uh, goes to the left. Bernie, great effort on that spare, doesn't go. Matt will 
close out with a, is that a six box? I see seven. Seven, okay. And Bernie closes with a ten box. That one's Good easy. Good out. That one's easy. Let's see. <laughs> when they're all gone, it's easy to tell. Sometimes from a distance, the pins are hiding a little bit. Okay, box nine coming up on game one of this match for Matt Rich and Bernie Col um, Corbett. Corbett, thank you. I lost my sheets. Or here. Oh, thank you. It's right in front of me. Last place I'm going to look is right in front of me. Yeah. All right, so Matty Rich is going for his first ball here. He's off onto the two pin, but he gets some good action there. He takes out six. Wakey, 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 Dan. Here's some information overload. <laughs> yeah, a little much. And Corbett is on the three pin, takes out three. Matt looking at a little bit of a tough spare here. It's all in a cluster, so that's an advantage. And uh, as he was probably afraid of, one pin stayed up. Oh, Corbett goes through the hole. Touches nothing. And Maddie for a 10 box, nice and clean. 112 after nine. And Corbett with an eight box. So he's at 87 after nine. So last box in this first game of round three. That started well with a double strike, wants to finish well too. Oh, that was a great ball in the pocket and he gets one of the dreaded leaves of 7-10 split. Corbett on the head pin. What do you call that? A uh, mess, but also <laughs> he gets some black splashes here, but I'm not sure that four pin tipping, well, it's better down than up, I suppose. Oh, Maddie trying to cut that wood into the 10 over to the 7. Just misses, not by much, just by fractions. <coughs> Corbett's got the 2, 3, 4, 10 to shoot out. So spread eagle minus 2. Good bid. Leaves the 2 and the 3. Matt trying to at least get one out of this mess. He gets one. So Matt closes with a 121 on that 9 box. And Bernie Corbett finishes with a nine box two, and so he has a 96 game. This is straight three of five of the first shift. We'll have a whole new rotation of bowlers in just a moment here. So five strings total pinfall qualifier. We're featuring lanes 13 to 14, but 20 of the 36 here at Fairlanes, Moncton, New Brunswick are in use right now. A lot of bowlers here bowling. We're only covering one set of two lanes at a time. So. Not everybody get there, but as they rotate in, we'll, get, we'll cover a lot of the bowlers in this. So Tim Hayserd on the left, Serge Babin on, Babin on the right, and uh, Tim Hayserd with a spare in the sixth box. And that's why he was, was made the finals last year. Good shooting like that. And Babin with a nine box for Babin. And um, put three on his fill in the spare that he left up in the fifth. He's a 61 after six. Tim Hayser's at 79 plus this ball. He's only had two two boxes without spares. They have a nice head pin shot, but it gets a mess for his reward. Four, seven, five, Ooh. ten. Wood didn't come into play. Tim put three on the fill. Came in on the six pin, just took out that right triangle. Tough fill for him, but he's had some good ones of the other three spares, so he's still working a great string. Could easily be in the 120s when all of a sudden done. Yeah, at he's least. at 80, 82 after seven, so nothing wrong with that after six. And it's a spare leave, too. Look at this. Look at that. Everything but the five pin. That was his strike ball. Could have been. And both bowlers are going to close out with 10 boxes. So 92 after 7 for Tim Hayser. 71 after 7 for Serge Babin. Babin. Friendly reminder, triangles are spares and squares are strikes. So 
So the notation between candle pin and ten pin is different, and the notation between American candle pin and Canadian candle pin is slightly different too. I mean, it didn't have to, but come on, I, no, couldn't, uh, you, I you, couldn't resist. When in Rome, my friend. When in Rome. <laughs> what a great! I like that. I'm, st I'm stealing that. Yeah. All right, ba Serge Babin back to the action. Drop nine his first ball. The seven pin stayed up. Tim Hayser was on the three pin and punched out three pins. So he's off the head pin at the moment. Serge looking to pick this up clean, nice and clean. No doubt about that. It's him on, on the two pin that time. And again, Serge pinning uh, super well. Still only the two left standing through these eight boxes, so he could build on that. Oh, Tim puts a great bid on that. Ends up with a nine box, but he touched the seven. Nothing wrong with that outcome. So one on one after nine for Tim Hayser. Yeah, nines are fine on that third ball. Surge is at 81 plus a mark or plus a fill. <coughs> oh, that's the fill he's after. And that's an eight fill. Tim's still on the three pin a little bit. He's off the head pin. So Surge ends up with an eight fill. He's at 89 after eight. Tim. Uh, he's he's looking at the four six split. I don't like that. Tim's got the one seven nine ten. If he makes something dance around, that could go. Yeah, ten will be the toughest one of that one. Here's Serge. Yeah. Trying to take that off the wall. Look at Tim. He's on the head pin. He moves things around a lot. Everything but that ten pin. Yeah, just nothing covering it. Didn't Did get the, the luck away from the head pin. I think that was a very respectable attempt. Um, Serge with a nine. Tim with a ten. Tim is at 111. I show nine for each, sorry. Oh, no, nine. I'm sorry. There's somebody standing in front of that, and I couldn't see the 10 yeah. pin still there. So we got to check each other all the time. We're not going to be perfect. Big guy in front of a skinny pin. I didn't see who that was. Absolutely. It's completely impersonal. I don't know who it was either. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not. It just looked clean to me. All right, box 10. And Surge is on the three pin, leaves, takes out five. Tim is still on the three pin. Serge may be happy that Wood stayed put there. It almost jumped the lip and became dead wood, but instead it stayed put. Now he might have a chance to cut area this 10 along with it. Looks to me as a bowler a little flat, but I think it's something to work with for sure. I mean, the left side of that wood is where I would probably try to go. Let's see what he does. It's difficult. That's what he's doing, same as I was Ooh. thinking. Get this very difficult spare and takes everything but the four pin. Now again, Serge will have nothing worse than nine in the string. How about a nine? And Tim's got a ten. Two. That's a clear ten. <laughs> no doubt about that. And a 120. So your your prediction was right with a 120 game. I think he was hoping for more than that, so he may come back and visit you for for jinxing him. <laughs> but um, it's still a good string, a 120. And uh, Serge Babin, Babin had a 107. Yeah. All right, now coming up in the next set. He's just been working a steady 118 average right now. Steve Colbert in the right, Rich Beveridge Sr. in the left, and neither is on a mark. Uh, Rich had a 42 first half, Steve had a 43, so they definitely want to try to mark out as many boxes as they can here to get back in this. So both off to the left, Rich a little more than Steve. Steve mm. takes everything but the head pin on that spare bid. And uh, Rich had a good bid too, but the five and the nine remain. I saw some French language in the chat. I might pronounce Serge uh, more natively, but Serge has been working a 125 average uh, up to this point. You know, he got unlucky, had to really pin his way through, but you know. 10 box for 100. Serge, nine box for Rich. Yeah, as we learned last night, my French is stale, but yours is pretty good. Merci. More France French, of course, but yeah. I studied French for about four or five years, but it's yeah. been a long time and, and I'm really stale on it. Yeah, the signs are bilingual. We, bilingual, we found our way through. Oh, nice hit. Oh, strike. Colbert. That's a hammer for Steve Colbert. Beautifully done. He needs, some, he needs to mark here. It's important for him. Beverage has a chance to that eight pin tip late, one, three, six. He hits it all, and there it goes, off the wall. A little scary moment there, but he still got the mark. That puts Rich Beveridge at 61 in the ball, and Steve Colbert at 63 plus the ball.
by the fill. Both bowlers are on the fill, and Steve <laughs> takes out. Oh, your favorite, Dan. That's the, called the castle back in Mass. The 5-7-10, or 5-6-10. That stupid piece of wood in front. Well, there's a piece out to the side, though. That, that's a lucky version of it. Well, kind of. There's usually one, sometimes two pieces of wood on that. It always results from a good ball. Oh, look and at it. And he picks it up. That's tough to do. So spare for Steve and a seven fill and uh, still one more pin remaining to pick up. Yeah, spare on strike for Colbert. That's great work on that. That's good comeback. Uh, nine box for Rich Beverage. So 77 after eight for Beverage, 83 and a ball for Steve Colbert. That was a clutch spare because I get that leave a lot. Technically not named after me, but some people think it is. Um, Colbert punches out what we call the half Worcester down in the U.S. Rich Beverage puts six on his first ball. So Steve closes out with 85 in the eighth box, looking to pick up this mark. There you go. You close the frame. Ooh. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. But the 10 pin stuck around, and Rich got... His ball was drawn to that wood and punched through. Steve looking for a 10 box here. Great gets recovery. It. No problem there. Rich looking to get a couple anyway. He gets, gets two. Eight box for Rich. 85 after nine for Rich Beverage. And 95 after nine for Steve Colbert. Strike three, is, this is the last pair of bowlers for uh, strike three. Once everyone gets finished, everyone rotates one lane to the right, and we'll start strike four or five of this first ship. Plenty of qualifying bowling, so whenever you tune in, we're here. Box 10. Colbert on the right with a 7-10 split. Two solid on the head pin will do that. And Rich got a lemon drop on a six pin and a six pin only. Oh, no, he got the nine too. Oh, the nine went? Okay. Yep, uh, we'll save him some money. Yep, not a lemon drop. A two drop. Sorry, Alfie. And Paul will figure out a way to monetize that leaf, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice leaf. Nice punch out. All right, well, good good response to it, though. He took out mm. everything but the two. So both bowlers will have, I know in Canada you call it something different. In the U.S. we call it an open box. Yeah. And a 10 for Steve. And a 10 for Rich. So Steve Colbert has a 105. And... Rich Beverage has a 95. In fairness, in the ICBA rulebook, it says no mark. Okay, no mark. The word open doesn't. Yeah. Markless. All right. Dud. No, I wouldn't dare say that. So I may hand the mic back to Paul for the next yep. round. All right. Yep. Action st stops down for just a little bit while we uh, get set to string number four. <laughs> yeah. Feel free to do whatever you do. I'll filibuster. <laughs> this is string four or five, folks. After this, uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to hang it on this and Russell the mic some more for these fine folks. There we go. Okay. Charger's coming up, bud. Away. So again, folks, schedule. We got two more strings of uh, first shift qualifying. Then we'll rest for two more. Yeah, two more strings of the first shift. This whole second shift, five strings, and then top out of the field. We'll move on to the playoffs. That'll be later on. I anticipate the start of that will probably be 3 p.m. Atlantic time. Remember, which is one ahead of Eastern time. For those of you in New England. And uh, the parts abroad. Uh, Atlantic Standard Time is, hang on, time change. Let me think this through. Uh, GMT minus four, UTC minus four. You can plug it into the time zone calculator from there. Again, the action should be from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Atlantic Time. 
Uh, Greenwich Mean Time minus four every day. Uh, today is the only day we're doing singles competition. The trophy will be decided here. See if Chris Merrill defends or someone else. Hey, Tim Hazer was finalist last year. He's in good form as well. Uh, that's all going to get decided today. And then Tuesday through Saturday, we've got our teams matches coming up. Tuesday through Friday, we're going to have our uh, round robin matches. Uh, there will be two divisions, basically round robin style. 11 matches, if I'm counting correctly, two divisions of 12. And then uh, late Friday, as well as Saturday, will be the uh, playoff matches. Paul's Russell and his mic on there. We will get set in just a moment. Uh, Craig, just talking a lot of bowlers, getting the stats and bios while Dan was doing some play-by-play, -play, my voice uh, for the, play, uh, the qualifiers tomorrow and the playoffs Friday night and Saturday. Every day, 8 a.m. Eastern time, 9 o'clock Atlantic time. From Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada, Fairlanes. Canada Promoting York's presentation of the ICC singles knockout today. World team competition starts tomorrow. Again, 8 a.m. Yep. Eastern time, 9 o'clock Atlantic time. Live on Candle Pin Bowling Network, always free, never a charge. Subscribe to YouTube, Candle Pin Bowling Network. Like us on Facebook so you never miss a ball. All right, so this is the fourth string now, right, Greg? Yep, string number four. All right, so we have Danny Summerton, a six-time world champion for the fifth string later on. We'll talk about later on. Steve yep. Poulin as well. Devin Brooks, our fifth and final string, coming up after this string. All right, straight force underway. All right, Justin Scally, who just won King of the Hill the last two times. Which bowling center was that again? That was at uh, Spare Time, I believe, in Whitensville. Half west to the start. Richard Beveridge Sr. Is that Bernie? No, Bernie's up first, I believe. Yeah, Bernie's first. Bernie's first. Got the notes, my notes in order here. Gotcha. Bernie Colbert. Corbett, it's Corbett. I'm sorry, Corbett. Yeah, they put L on here, it's pronounced Corbett. Yep. They spelt it wrong in the sheet. He put down L. Bernie born in 1965. Still born at a good level. He's a 116 peak bowler during his career. He's from New Waterford, Nova Scotia. He has a 182 high single, high triple 427, a high five of 625, throwing a high 10 of 1250. From Sydney Mines, Stan Lanes. Bowling for over 40 years. Friends got him involved. His hobby? Bowling. Good choice. Great to work with you, Greg. Dan Castle here with us this week also. Yep. Pleasure, Paul. All right, so Greg, give me an update here. We have a 10 for Corbett. Corbett. Ten, 10 for Corbett and 8 for Scully. Okay, so it's the fourth of five strings. First of two shifts, we'll do a separate feed for the second shift. Yep. And we'll sign up for a playoff after that. Playoffs. Oh, tip. Oh boy, that would tumble just behind the nine for Scally. Third ball's coming up for each. Justin, 39 years young, averaging 116 right now. Nice 10. 10 for Bernie. Justin matches a 10. Nothing like the great game of Canopin Bowling. Invite your friends to bowl Canopin Bowling. In fact, this holiday season and all season long, please consider Canopin gift cards. Please support your local bowling centers. Invest in Canopin Bowling. Again, feel me involved. It's good for Mother's Day, Father's Day, anniversaries, birthdays, a thank you. Graduation. Candlepin gift cards, it gets keeps on giving all season long, not just the holidays. It does make a good stocking stuffer as well. Check your local bowling center for specials and lane availability. Scally led one pin for a spare. Corbett two has the 10 pin. He missed it. Yep. Scally, he gets his. <laughs> and according to Bob Lee, the Candlepin Bowling Network executive producer doing the stats research, when nine pins drop in the first ball and the head pin stands, it's about 59% for the Class A pro bowler conversion without wood. Which seems like a low number because it's about 68 to 72 on a single pin shot. But for some reason, he missed the head pin in the first ball. Well, that's, a, that's that old chestnut, small ball, skinny pin. It looks like a toothpick down there. Yeah. All right, so Scally 18 through two. Bernie two tens and a nine, 29 through three. Justin in the... First of mixed Candlefish Cancer finals we ever had, San from Bolorama, San from Maine, with Amanda Carroll. It was terrific in the qualifiers as well. Watch it on Candlefish Bowling Network on YouTube. 
I, I knew that King of the Hill wasn't in spare time. It was Putnam Street. The Putnam Street. I knew what, yeah, I got it wrong. Uh, I'm on limited sleep. What can I say? Scally drills it. You know, it's an old chestnut on the internet. If you want to get an answer to a question, don't, like, ask what it is. Say the wrong thing, and it'll get corrected. So back-to-back -back spare, spare but nine. Thank you. Thank sorry, you, everyone. Sorry, Greg. Spare nine, 37 through three, 47 the ball through four. Bernie Corbett, 38 through four. Two tens, two nines. Yeah. Justin's high single, 195, has a high triple of 457, and a high five of 706. Nine drop for Scally, another big fill on that 56 through four. I'm Corbett on now, he's got the one three and the eight pin, but what's gonna rustle here? Miss, miss. While Paul wrangles that, Scally's gonna need some Deadwood wrangled as well, and then he's gonna get a clear shot of yet another pin. Uh, he's just got the head pin, he got a great mix out of that. Careful, Paul. We're <laughs> Paul, just be mindful your audio is carrying through, I'm afraid. Scally's going to take aim on the single pin here. 56 and a ball through four. What a half this would be if he drills it, and he does. Three straight. And he'll, I'll, I'll do well, the five for now. Nobody sits at Worlds, but that's going to be that. Thank you. Corbett completes the 10. He's got a 48 half. Great half working for Skelly. Not to self. I gotta find your levels on that. Thanks, Greg. Just get some raffle tickets here. I just gotta get the scores here real quick. We just got these in, Greg. So why don't you give us an update on the scores here uh, oh. after the first three strings? Fantastic. First of all, I'm gonna move the score sheet here, and we see. Uh, sure. Uh, this, uh, tell me about 13. It's what's the first of two shifts here? No. Uh, who's on lane 13, please? Okay, lane 13. Is the new one? Oh, page two probably. Oh, right here. Here we go. I'm getting things on the fly here, so bear with us here. Tim Hazer, who was the runner-up in the singles last year to Chris Merrill, who won it last season. Uh, that's why. <laughs> what a hammer. And Kevin Padgington on lane 13. Now balls to Putnam. Speaking of Putnam. We'll give you your due. Great center. He's an April birthday boy. Born in 1982, 41 years young. Currently in Townsend, Mass. Richie Leo Minster, known as Lemonster, Mass. <laughs> a 120 current bowler, 129. His best season in the average. And is, a, is there a spare for Hazard? Uh, Hazard struck. All right, so we missed that. We did the paper from the. Uh, yep, Adjacent's got a 10, and let's run down some scores here. Right. Joey, Joey Lister, 142 in the left. He's got 425 for a triple. Your other 400, Justin Waters, 405 after dropping 166. Brett Adams uh, is 399. Tim Douglas, 389. Mike McIntosh, 388. Devin, after uh, 152, someone asked. Devin Brooks, uh, 387, as is Tim Susi. Toffelmeyer, Freddie Toffelmeyer's got 386, and we've got a few 370s as well. A double strike for Hazard. Wow, what a start. Holy smokes, these scores are coming. He must have heard me say he's the one-up last year, but he came way back here. They can't hit me this time. They can't complain about that. <laughs> way Schultz, back. Matt Schultz, 379. Donnie Cox, 379. Ryan Hogan, 378. Scott LaPierre, 377. Matt Harnett, 374. Glenn Pinson, 370. Austin Barnes, 369. Jeff Surratt, 366. Matt Nichols, 365. Sean Bernard, 363, as is Carl Witham, Cole Fry, 362, and Stephen Body, 361. I'm going to cut it off at a 120 average because there's so much great bowling, I can't get through it all. And it's the first of two shifts. Oh, yeah. Tim was, Hazy going with the turkey, the triple strike. That was an eight, right? I couldn't see it. Oh, what a killer that is. Right, right down, down the, the middle. Pin. Yeah, perfect shot of Spread Eagle throwing the eight. Brutal. Worst, 20, is, worst is three. 23 through one, 33 in a ball. Good bid there by Padgington. Pays it. Object pin won't carry. Six on the second double strike ball. 39 through two. Deserved a lot better than that, Greg. Kevin, spare. So I have it as 18 through two, but I'm going to double check that score in a second. I did not. Yeah, the scoreboard here is manual score. It's very hard to read way back here. Kind of like in the bleachers back in the DJ booth. A lot further back than they usually are. Yeah, that's for sure. Kevin's a 120 as a 196 high single, high triple 484, a high five of 749, has a high 10 of 1399, not a bad average. Let me just uh, I'll check scores real quick. Gold at Masons for years before they closed last year. 
well, for over 30 years. She started the kids' league at age 10. Two-time Lemonster Fitchburg City Championship winner. And a five-time Richie Mayer team tournament tourney winner as well. It's both every world since he started bowling when he was eligible. Enjoys softball, coaching, and golf. All right, his bonus ball. So we had a 10 of 5 and a spare 9. What a funny game, Greg. How about that? That's how he bowled. Streaky. 34 through 3. Trying for another one. Right on it. Candy bar. Sky bar, I should say. Love sky bars. Neko. It discontinued for a few years. The yellow wrapper candy bar. They gave him a market yeah. basket. No market baskets up here in Canada, I guess. We're not. No brand deal, so we'll promote whatever we please. 44 and a ball through 4. And the 4th of 5. Opening round of two players to fall later oh. this afternoon on Canada. Oh, Florida. Timmy got them. Mark, sorry. So Tim had a 7, 46, All right. no, that's it. No, that's it. No, that's it. That's and right. 10, 56 through 4. Patrickson just missed left, has the four spin right, the 1, 3, 6, 10. We're on lanes 13 and 14 here at Fairlanes in Moncton and Brunswick, Canada. World Tournament yep. Teams competition tomorrow, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 9 o'clock local time, Atlantic Time. Coverage on Canada from Moline Network on YouTube and Facebook. Nice There's shot. a nice shot, spare. 60 and a ball at the half. Three in a row. Give me some bonus money. 60 half plus one, like Greg said. Who is this guy? And a Hazard 8 for 64 half. Not uh, too shabby. Now up on 13, please. The flat gut is keeping more action a little bit, we're told, so we'll see how it goes. It's also an American pastime to Bally who the flat gutters. Who's on 13, please? All right. Is that right? This is Richard Beveridge Sr. Yep, that's right. His son bowling also. Richard been around the block, 63 years young, from Rockland, Maine, pulls up Oakland Park Bowling Center, Tim Matero's home house. And uh, Sean Bernard on 13, right? Yep. Thank you. That's all I want to know. Sean, another April birthday. He's 43 years young. I'm sorry, 46 years young. He's from Sydney, Nova Scotia. His highest nice season shot. average, 124. And there's a spare for beverage, is it? Or a uh, 10? I'm no, he's ahead. So it's no, that's a, 10. It's that's a 10. 10. A 10 and a 9 to start. Yep. All right. All right. Get that set here. Sean Bernard, high single, 192. High triple, 464. A good batting, average, good batting average in baseball, softball, and Kenneth from bowling is high five six sixty seven. That's two out of three hits in baseball or softball. Very good. Thirty one years of Kenneth from bowling plus. His mother was a bowler, got him involved. He qualified for the singles in twenty twenty two, and he placed third in the worlds in the past. Beverage Senior leaves up the kingpin the five. For the ladies, I call it the queen pin. Richard's a 110 current league bowler, 117 average is best mm. season ending average. He has a high triple of 418, a high five of 675, going for well over 35 years. He's collected thousands and thousands, I mean thousands of baseball cards. Like update the score from Greg Gouillard. Yeah, Bernard, uh, he got nine as well, I believe. No, excuse me, that's eight, I'm fairly sure. I'm going to check on that again. Sean has a, a nine and a ten, 19 through two, it looks like. like. I can't read it from here either. We'll have to check it. Dan, check those scores, please, for Sean. Beverage, Beverage gets a spare. We can also watch the handwriting, folks. Come on. Scores. We can't see the scoreboard. We can't see the scoreboard. We can't see the scoreboard. We need to get the scores for oh, us. It's, yeah, it's 19. It's 19. Yep. Paul, if you're going to yell on the mic, let me know. I can set your levels down. Sorry. Thank you. We're releasing the headsets for the first time, and we're trying to see the scoreboard. Yeah. We're miles away, in a sense, back it, here. It still carries well. It's not totally directional. <laughs> yeah. You have the good stuff compared to my wired microphone. Yeah. I'm in great coupon society here today. 
So we're doing our best to run down the scores. This shot, oh wow, come on, Aid, you were hit. Please, please, goodness gracious. The scores are being updated on leaguesecretary.com. Uh, if you look up Fairlane's Moncton, New Brunswick, you should be able to see the scores. That's not a very convenient way to do it, but uh, the link is there. It's been posted in chat. If someone could post it again, we'd be greatly appreciative. Uh, And that's the best way to do the rundown here. Sean Brown, 10, 29 through three. Beverage Seniors on a spare, 29 of the ball from three. And that's a big fill. Big, big nine, once against the Kingpin, the five, a two for one special. Double the score. through three. Yeah. Bernard breaks up the diamond and leaves up the two pin for a spare. Beverage, another one. Back to back. 48 in the ball through four here in the fourth of five. From Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada, they're at Fairlanes. Sean shouldn't have too much difficulty with this one. It's a little out there. Here it goes. Yeah, it was mostly, more or less frozen. Good 39 shot. the ball through four. One more string after this, then we'll sign off and get ready for our second shift today. Then sign off after that and do our playoff knockout rounds. <coughs> Singles knockout. Teams tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time, 9 o'clock local time, Atlantic time. Kenneth from Bowling Network on YouTube and Facebook. Now we're going to have a beverage got the 610. Just two on... Two on the fill, 40 through three. Yep. All scores are confirmed, by the way. Uh, Bernard yeah. in the pocket, six. Well, it'd be 50. I think, I, I think I've done my math right. I'm sorry, 50. Yeah. That's six fill for Sean Bernard. So it's 50 through four for the beverage. Building on some good pinning there. And 45 for that spare six for Sean Bernard. Yeah. Three, six right, four, seven left. We'll go. Oh, so close. Sidewalls are lively. You got the right idea. Good try by Bernard. Ooh. What's, sp what's going on on Beverage? But he's got a nine for 59. He had three nine draws. He missed that one. He actually had two fill on that one. He missed it that time for a 10. It's not a bad half. 59 for the veteran. Bola, 54 half on that nine box for Sean Bernard. And we're halfway to the fourth of five. Paul Grant, Dan Castle, Greg Gouillard, and Canopin Bowling Network. The International Canopin Championship Week starting today with the singles knockout qualifying round one of two. Yeah. I'm seeing in chat here the link is, like, literally not able to be shared because it's so big here. You should have all scores correct, Dan. Thanks so much for your help. Um, but, yeah, my understanding is you can go to leaguesecretary.com, look up the bowling center, and then you're able to, like, get patched in here. We'll run down scores in just a second, but take a look at that shot by Corbett. Nine drop. Scally's working a great string as well. He's got a four fill, which is too bad on the head pin here. Can't hear you in my headphone. He's got a piece of wood to the right of that wiggling five pin. Could try going to the 10. Paul's all set. Spare. <laughs> Bernie marks up again. Scally missed everything that time. Weekdays at Bernie's. 58 to ball through six. Scally trying to make a big out. Tough six. Mm. After a spare four, 70 half, 76 through six. Had three marks in a row. Close of nine, seven, and four. Pulling really well of late. The Academy one team took six points off Central two Josh Daly's team Friday night. Watch that thriller on Canopy Bowling Network on YouTube. Every Friday night's the Friday Night Pro League game of the week on Canopy Bowling Network on Facebook and YouTube. Scally 4-1 split, they get just four. One, two, four, eight. Bernie on lane 14. The left-hander, tough, tough shot. That's his fill six, right? 64. Six, straight effort. Scally, hmm. ah. One wiggling four, eight. So 64 through six for Bernie. You now it's killing Skelly inside. He knows he's had the momentum and he's capable of big strings. Wants to find the range here to get the out and keep building. Bernie gets a nine, 73 through seven. Pinning well. And Justin gets the 10. Fine string, 86 through seven in the fourth of five. Significant shot in that string. Skelly might have some confidence going into the last three. Get your Mike Lawrence Kennelfin calendar to support Kennelfin's for cancer this week while supplies last. Wow shirt 2.0 to help support Kennelfin's for cancer and Kennelfin's for cancer, Kennelfin for cancer hats. All week while supplies last here at Moncton through Saturday. 
Kenneth Offensive Cancer is a 501c3 charity. Kenneth Offensive is helping Kenneth Offensive going through cancer treatments. Any amount you donate via Venmo, Kenneth Offensive number four, cancer.com via Venmo, Kenneth Offensive number four, cancer.com. Scally strike! Ooh. That's for like Scally. 96 plus two. Wakey, wakey, we got a big string going. Through eight. Triangle in the seven for Bernie. What a bid this would be. Shot if he gets it, but it goes right. Six, nine, seven, right to left. Can you hear me on that? All right, so Corbett, Corbett's Corbett got a seven eight. in that. Uh, what color is Nate? Got a seven? I showed seven. Okay. okay. Are you missing my audio somehow? No. Can you hear me now? Oh, for goodness sake. I'll watch this for you. Next here, Scali's punched out on the first one. He's still working on that strike. I'm so, so, all right, Paul, I can't help you out of there. Nice, Scally. Scally, oh. tough two fill in that spare. It was on a strike, though. Uh, it was on a strike, though, that's right. You got a banana split, I call this. The four, seven left, six, ten right. So six in the strike. One, oh, two, three, eight. As I drop my glasses on the ground. <laughs> I wasn't going to out you. glasses. Good out by Scally, eight. One, oh, two, three, eight. Now one, ten, through nine, nine for Bernie. 89 through nine. Three bowls on a team. First of two shifts. Craig. I'll give you the sheets there. Justin, a pro series doubles match winner with Jeff. The Bulldogs, I call him Walsh. They've won the same team, the Friday Night Pro League this year, Academy One. Justin, three appearances in England Candle Pins. Multiple King of the Palace championship winner as well. Just missed right, got the 6 9 10. 1 6 9 10 for Bernie. Good shot, he got it. Pretty shot. Spare in the 10th. Scally open with the one and two. So Bernie 99 of the ball through nine, trying to get to 109 with a strike on spare. Just a big golfer as well, and loves softball. Very good athlete. Missed left for a nine, 119, fourth string. We'll see him again next string. It's a great strike he had there in that eighth box. Big time in the string. He's been averaging uh, just a shade over 100 so far, so that 119 is going to give him a lift. Bernie goes left. He takes down. It's hit more. Come on. Oh, there goes the head pins. We get five. He'll have the 104, fourth string. Corbett's been averaging similarly, uh, 305 about averaging about 102, so that's above average. Tip that to Tim Hayes. We did a campaign for cancer fundraiser January 15th at Agawam Bowl. He won a 50-50 yep. raffle, $267, gave it all back to the charity. That alone helped one family going through cancer treatment. So thank you, Tim Hazer, for doing that. Amazing. We got the jar out here in Moncton as well. All sorts of dollars are going into the jar. You know what I mean. And it's great to see all the support for that. I was just telling everyone how thankful we are for the support simply. Rob Linehan buying a candle pencil ca cancer hat for $20, 28 Canadian money. Thank you, Rob Linehan. Every dollar helps. We'll get a change. We'll make it work. That's a great half for Paddington. He's got the 2 8 10, though. This is going to be a tough one to build on. Ooh. Hayes are close, but left the six. Can he get this to spit? Oh. No. Tonight, four in a row. No fault of his own. Hit it perfectly. 67 and a half. Trying to get a 77 through six. Hazer a nine. 73 through six. And makes, makes the 10. 77 through six. I'm just going to watch this. Yeah, that's right. Tim, a 122 current league bowl, a 125 is best season ending average. There's a high single of 191, high triple 445, high five 683. Yeah, man. Patrick didn't have that five. He'd be over, it'd be at 80 already until the 120s pace. But Patrick did be better than that. And look at this six right, seven, eight left. Crossed over, I suppose. That's a harsh one. 
Eight pins back here, too, for Hazer. Oh, that's pretty when it goes. Look at this. Oh, it's gone. Got it. Slower than it usually does, but. Trying to get in the finals for the second time in a row. Runner up last year to Chris Merrill for Maine. Chris Easter Classic Championship winner. Two, two and three years ago, Tim Douglas to Tornado here today also. Won last year. Cut. Almost. <laughs> the violin blow, blow went left to right. Right to left, rather. Didn't go. Oh, I coughed it on the mic. Brutal. Sorry, we're getting used yeah. to these headset microphones. Good check. Good check for Patrick. Oh, that's going to that's going to that's going to ruin any microphone no matter what. Great pinning by Cat Patrick. Yeah. 87 through 7. Yep. Uh-oh. Come on internet, don't you dare quit on me. All right, I think we got the data back maybe. Oh, shoot. My cable's plugged in, people. Uh, go on, Paul, keep talking. I'm sorry. We're in the fourth string of five, shift one of two. Separate broadcast for our second shift, and after that we'll sign off for a single knockout playoffs later on this afternoon. Hazard goes left, just gets four. Actually, three. Hadgerton pounds the strikes a little full, leads up a 3-1 split. 3-6, 10 right, seven left. Hazard was on a spare, so just three. 86, 86 through seven, open with the one and the four. In Canada, open means you're on a mark. In America, the States, yeah. open means no spare, no strike. Yeah. Open means you're working a mark, yeah. Yeah, so I'll have to be careful that up here in Canada. Yeah. Uh, apparently, the terminology varies, but definitely on the TV shows I've seen it said that. What way. a shot oh, for a spare! Yes. The Padgington, Kevin on fire. 97 of the ball through eight. Hazer, 10. 96 to eight. Yeah. It helps with the ampusaur. Sometimes you see the people's handwriting like as you see them writing it. That's it. I'm learning. Helps out at Exeter Lanes too when they got the overhead projector. They usually were a little closer to it. Here we got this really awesome DJ booth back here. Uh, Fair Lanes when they got the glow bowling, you got the DJ bumping back here with the tunes. Fantastic. Great. Oh, and that's a fantastic splash by Hazer. That 10 pin dropped late. I had a delayed reaction to that. Fourth mark, third strike. Hatching trying to match it in the pocket. Gets 9, 10, strike. Oh, baby. Matching strikes. That's on a spare. 107 through 8, 117 plus 2 in the ninth. Wow. Oh, baby. That's such a good shot. I mean, Patrick did literally, apart from that five, it's, I mean, five is just losing one spare. And if you jump a, drop a deluge of the marks after, uh, you can still work a big string. And now he's definitely going to bust into high 120s, presuming a decent fill. Both on strikes, trying to double him up. He goes, steals nine. Ooh, nice. That would have been a Julian strike in Canada. They made a living. Uh, Dave Julian in Canada made a living off that shot in the 80s. The name stuck. The Julian strike gets called when the head pins last to fall for a strike. Yeah, I've understated Padgett's potential. He's easily into 130s, possibly, with a good count. For a spare and strike, he's got it. 116 through nine, 126 in the ball in the 10th. That's it. Patrick's in 107 through 8, 117 plus 2 in the ninth. Yep, this is his 10th box right now. Okay, we're a box behind. Okay. He is. That's in all. In the pocket for another strike, almost. Well, that was almost a quick way to catch up. Oh, that almost doubled. Now he's got to wait for the Deadwood atop it all. So 126 officially for Hazard in the 10th. Plus whatever. And Woods got to get removed on lane 13. Yep. Eh. Scully's been doing a good job. Is he going to take aim at this? Yeah, oh. He's going to go around anyway. Oh, goodness. He's going to go aim at it anyway. He got it. <laughs> Spare and strike. Cheeky, cheeky. What a good shot, though. 127 through 9, 137, and a ball in the 10th. Kevin Padgington. Having a fine string. Aggressive pace of play initiative. Just trying to clear the wood wherever you are. <laughs> Making Justin Scali just next to work. Guess you got to be careful though. It could go up into the pin deck or into another lane though, if you're not careful. The best bowls in the world here at the World Tournament, Moncton and Brunswick, Canada, on Canada Pin Bowling Network all day coverage all week long, Tuesday through Saturday, 9 a.m. local time, Atlantic time, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Tuesday through Saturday. Playoffs start Friday night. This around three o'clock or four o'clock, and then we'll have the <coughs> quarter semis and finals. 9, 12, and 3 scheduled start time on Saturday.
All right, Tim Hated. I see Bob Lee in the YouTube chat with the updated stats. Thanks so much. Yeah, we're going to have you up here, Bob. Paddington in the pocket again. That looked a little better than that. He gets seven, maybe eight. And Hazard five. Eight yeah. it is. 145. 145. What a performance, Kevin Paddington. And Tim Hazard, 131. No surprise here, Tim Hazard. Oh, always look, up there in the running. Look at all that ink on the score sheet. Fantastic. Got to take it away now for the next bowlers, but that's great work. And um, I got to, I'll take a look at the standings here as we flip to Jean Bernard and uh, Rich Beveridge Sr. There we go. That's your three strings, right? Uh, we're on string four right now. Yeah, that's string right, four. Three strings completed. Yep, that's right. That's right. I got the right one. Oh, look at this for Beveridge. That's Richard his Beveridge senior. first ball. That's his fourth, uh, third nine drop in six boxes. Sean Bernard on lane 13. 3-2 three, split. 1-3-6, 4-7 left. Beveridge, the former 117 bowler for a spare. He's right on it. 69 the ball through six. Bernard open. Well, I should say missed everything. Something like that. Yeah, Tim Hazard's got a uh, three, 356 through three. He's averaging just about uh, 118 or so. So he's Sean, above average. Sean grabs three for an eight box, 62 through six. Very Four good. box to go on the fourth. One string to wrap up shift one of two. We'll sign off, get ready for shift two shortly afterwards. Yeah, we just. 15 minutes or so after that, give or take. Yep, when you're struggling in a box, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Good out on that, getting half the pins. Beveridge missed the pocket that time, four Austin plus the nine. That's on a spare, 74 through six. Thank you. Four Austin plus the nine behind the three. Five sure. there. Tough leave, you pick it up. Pocket splash. Nice. Back to back. Four spares, second time, back to back. 84 and a ball through seven. In Oakland Park bowling lanes, Oakland, Maine. Richard Beveridge Sr. out of five, fourth himself. Sean takes a nine, 71 through seven. Get a spare six back in the fourth. Hitting well overall. Paddington had been averaging 111 through the first three. 333, in fact, for the triple. So his uh how big was it again? 145? Good grief. That's gonna that's gonna give him a surge going into the last one. Last of five. Bebbage, nine again. That's four times a nine drop. 93. Oh, look seven. at this. Oh strike. Tip. Sean Bernard delivers in the eighth. 81 plus two. For another spare. Bang! Three in a row, five out of six. Uh, these 19s are starting to stack up to your point, Paul. 103 in a ball through eight, outstanding. Top 32 make the knockout. It's high single again, 172, high triple 448, high five, 675. Loves Caleb and bowling. And you get a huge baseball card collector. Thousands of thousands. Will be nine again? Good bid. Oh, now he's not even going to get the back row, or is he? He got seven. Four, seven, eight triangle. Seven in the fell. One, ten through eight. Sean's on a strike. One, three, six. For another spare. Just missed outside. For a spare and strike. Just missed inside. Got the Oreo cookie. Got the cream in the middle, left the wafers on the outside. Eight in the strike, 89 through eight. Rich will take an eight that time, back to earth. 118 through nine. Sean takes a nine. He's at 98 through nine. I'll have a bit of a part of the Oreo he doesn't finish. <laughs> I'm sure you would, Greg. Mm -hmm. Greg, you're, an open, you're a bottomless pit, you don't even show it. Oh my God. When do you get to be my age? Uh, good for you. <laughs> 343 is the current cutoff right now, which is, oh gosh, math. Uh, 114 average right now. That's the 32nd right I'm now. I'm good at that math. So no, mid, nothing else. Mid 110s. Oh, I should have outsourced that to you. Average 3610. Spare chance. 
This yeah. is for a six spare in 10 boxes here in the fourth. But that one, he got the Oreo cookie. Greg, see, he make, we're making you hungry here. That's the best part. I always, you always, as a kid, you love to eat the cream in the middle first. You never eat the wafers till the end. Shot for a spare almost. Oh, and there was four. wood in back too. Beverage gets the 10. A nice fourth string, 128 for the 110 current league bowler, Richard Beveridge Sr. from Oakland, Maine. And 108 for Bernard, let's take a look here. So Beveridge Sr. had been averaging, he'd been averaging 101, so that's a big time jolt. Now I'm going to cough. <coughs> Break out the Ludens. Oh, good grief. Bernard, let's see, Sean Bernard had been averaging 121 to this point, so that 108's gonna set him back a bit, but. Been pinning pretty decently. It only had that one eight box, so still hanging on despite only get coming away with two marks in that. Along with Dan Castle, Greg Gouya, and Paul Grant, live from Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. This is the ICC Singles Knockout Qualifying Round One of Two on Canopy Bowling Network. Canopy Bowling Network, formerly Spread Eagle Productions, is free always, never a charge. Oh, that's right. No credit card required. Please subscribe. Get your friends and family to do so. Also, it's Canopy Bowling Network on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook as well when we go live. And we're in for a treat, a six-time world champion from McLaughlin Truck and Trailer. Why not? Davey Summerton coming up next in the string on lane 13. Oh, my God. I forgot the product placement. There's our logo. Our new uh, Candle Pit Bowling Network uh, Spread Eagle callback. Okay. Just a second, folks. Okay. Remaining bowlers are uh, finishing up on the other lanes right now, and then we'll get started with string five. You. We'll keep you alive? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll reset the score sheets real quick for all, all, all right, you. So, again, okay, I'm just giving up the, the top scores for now through three strings. We just finished up a fourth now, but some are still in progress. Through three completed strings and shift one of two. The freight train, Joey Lister, first at 425 at a 142 third. Waters World, Justin Waters, 166 third. He's at 405 second. Brett Adams, 399 at a 168 first. The Tornado, Tim Douglas, Easter Classic winner in the Kennel Pitcher Cancer. Season three led him one winner at Webster Timberlane's having to mass. He's fourth at 389. Mike McIntosh, 3.0 at a 152. Third string is a 388. Devin Brooks, we're gonna see next, 387. Now they're announcing raffle tickets. 8386, you got that? Uh 50-50 raffle, it's a good old pastime. Uh, I don't think we're I don't think we're so lucky. 8386. I did win, I did win a $630 <laughs> last year on one of them. Good luck to those of you playing at home. No, I'm just kidding. We'll yeah, have we string five up. $30 for Canopy for Cancer and like, give the other 500 to don't our equipment upgrade for Canopy Mowing Network. The real action will resume in just a moment. So Davey Summerton coming up next on lane 13. The red shirt, Justin Scally returns. Of course. The second string on lane 14. Davey Summerton. The team is Sean. O'Flaherty, Tony McLaughlin, Robbie Henderson, Chris Hollett, Tim Carrigan, Carrigan, and Pat Virgil. Part of a McLaughlin truck and trailer. Is he up first? Scally starts off the strong strike. with a strike in this fifth string. Smile on his face. Well, he can play, I've seen him so many times. He can have a, a bad string at the back of the 130, 140. Countless number of times. Getting his groove back. Oh, sure. Here's Davey Summerton. He goes right, steals seven, one, seven, nine. Would you, mind let, would you mind letting me know the others on 13 as well? I'll watch the pins. Yep. Steve Poulin follows Davey Summerton. Uh -huh. Steve, Steve Poulin. Got it. That's Mike Poulin, Hall of Fame eligible next time around. P-O-U-L-I-N. Of course. And he'll be followed by Devin Brooks. D-E-V-I-N. Summerton begins with eight. Yep. High single, 197. He's a 125 league bowler. His best season in the average, 135 for entire season. 503 high triple, high five, 757 out of Woodside Bowlerama, Halifax. Skeller for double, crossing over. That looked good. Eight, five and the eight. Summerton, check mark, plus the seven. Davey bowling for 40 years. His father was a bowler also. His highest world average, 128. Scally for spare and strike, he's got it. What a start. 23-1, 30 to ball through two. Dave right to left, 357. 
Dave won his first world title with McLaughlin Truck and Trailer in 2002 as he sweeps down all three nice. for 10. 18 through two. There we go. Final string of this first of two qualifying rounds. They won four titles in a row, 2002, three, four, five, 2007, 2015, uh, uh, 13, I think it says here. And three were home, three were on the road in the States. I was teasing Calvin Locke, he's won three in Canada, he's never won one on the road. <laughs> I was teasing about that earlier. Scally on the bonus, gets six, 36 through two. Summerton, half west to right, three nine. Justin Scally for three in a row on lane 14. Looks good, he's got it. Nine pin two, nice shot. What a start. 46 in the ball through three, wow. I swear he'd been struggling in the first few, but he's making a push late. Remember, 110, one mid-110s average is probably gonna make the cut here. And Davia, rare seven, just 25 through three. Davia, also a baseball player, played first, second base, and shortstop, had a 310 batting average. Not too shabby. Also enjoys golf, sports, and his kids. It's a good thing that parents enjoy the kids. They're better. From Eastern Passage, Nova Scotia. Scally in the bonus. Takes down eight, but a tough split. The four ten he's got wood to work with. 54 through three in the final string of the match. That'll be interesting. He might choose to play the right side wood. Possibly trampoline it across. I think the left side wood is angled wrong. He'd obviously prefer to go right to left, though. Let's see. For four in a row. Bounces back, won't go. Ball's still there. As the world turns, it spins around. It's still in play, but. I have yet to see a ball moving that slow ever take a pin. There was the one in Agawam where the ball was foul, and, and no one knew what to do with that one, like how long the uh, wait, because it was technically a penalty ball at that point because it was out of the gutters. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be funny if that went down? <laughs> hey, don't play the wood, Justin, play the ball. <laughs> well, let's see. <laughs> you can't play the ball by killing up bowling rules, but wouldn't it be funny if you could play the ball in the alley too? Play the ball. Clock has already struck noon, but. That could be a good new rule proposal change, huh? Play the ball. <laughs> that would probably chip your ball more though. Ah. That's your own ball, you paid good money for that. Davey picks it up. And Scally gets a nine, 63 through four. Davies, I believe it's a spare, wasn't it? I'm, I'm looking I'm for the. I'm not sure of the delay. I'm not sure he threw a ball. I couldn't see it. We have a struck view back here. Let's see here. Uh, official scorekeeper behind. So it yep, is. Yep, he smudged it. We got it right. 35 in the ball to four. Justin for four out of five. Strike bid nine. Crossed over. He has the six. In the pocket, strike Ooh. for Summerton. Backsplash. On spare. 45 through four, 55 half, plus two. How many balls can say they're a six-time world champion, Greg? Wouldn't that be nice? I even have, I haven't had one of my dreams. Scully got robbed by the wood, that roadblock, high piece. Tough one. Uh, he's looking skyward, looking outward. The brothers, one of the brothers Poulins here, Stephen Poulin. Coming up soon. Justin's got a nice half. 72. Sorry, I took that away far too quickly. 59, 52 half. Yeah. 72 half for Scali, 55 and a ball through Summerton. Sorry to keep squirreling it on you. That's okay. Now we can take a look at Poulin and Padgington. Kevin Patrick now lane 14, a fine last string. Yeah. 145 in the fourth. In the pocket again, this time it's a diamond. Well, that's gonna work. Well, that three and five fell late for Poulin. Steve's, uh, got, Steve's got to look at the 6'10". This is, this is actually Devin Brooks. Oh, excuse De me. Devin Brooks is second, Devin Brooks is Excuse me, excuse I me. I got the lineup mixed up, my ball. It's hard to see the scoreboard here too. For a spare, no. Apologies, I'm back here just trying to do my best. Yeah, we're trying to keep this, these information on the fly. Patchen splits the uprights for a 10. Just out of fifth. 
same thing for Devin Brooks. Devin Brooks, turning 29 years young in December from Fredericton. 117 average, 173 high single, high triple 421 out of Kingswood for over 24 years. Paddington is right, but gets a break. Not much a break, but gets more to work with, 17910. And a tough leaf here for Devin. He's got more to work with, though. Paddington for a spare somehow, almost. That, that what's going to roll. Have a, keep an eye on that as yeah. Brooks drills it. Couldn't find an electric charging station. Enough steam on it. And there's a spare for Brooks. Yeah. the ball for two. What well, didn't work out for Kevin. Too bad. We'll get the score sheets as soon as we get the memo. We'll keep the results of all the scores, and we'll try. Get, we'll keep the fifth string qualifiers on a second shift, a, a next broadcast for round two. Can't the next presentation of the ICC World Tournament officially starts tomorrow, local time, 8 a.m., well, 9 a.m. local time, Atlantic time, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Tuesday through Saturday, include the playoffs, Friday night and Saturday morning. Quarter semis and finals on Saturday. Both missed the pocket, but a 1-2 lead. Ooh. For Devin Brooks, now nine. Once again, that nine pin drop of the head pin. Thank you we very much. One for two in our coverage so far. Which I seem to see when I broadcast, but Bob Lee says it's 59% <laughs> in his study. And he missed again, so it's one mm. for three, Bob Lee, that I've seen. Just saying. I guess if you lost the range of the head pin, I guess it's slightly more likely in a vacuum. And he gets about 68 to 72% for the average for class A bowler without Boink. wood. And that's a Paul Grant special. Missed the second, make the third. Never a good time for that. 10. So 29 through 2, 39 the ball from three. Yeah, catching 10. He got six on that one, but remember, the five didn't hold him back that last string when he went off. 26 for three. Devin Brooks is pinning perfectly so far. Perfect game in Kenneth Bowling. Tens, spares, and strikes. Back in the pocket. All a pits. check mark. Brooks missed left. One, three, six, ten. Four husband right. But he's got a working ball. You can pin this down pretty easy as long as you don't. Well, even there, the wood's not going to prevent you from punching too bad. So. You should always have a chance for 10. Devin knew it right away. Devin for a spare. Got it! Nice and wired. Very good shot. Second spare of the last three. 49 of the ball through four here in the fifth. Paddington to nine. Kevin 35 through four. Devin's grandparents were bowlers. Former French champion. Won the Nationalists as a kid with a double strike in the last two boxes. Pretty impressive. That got to give you confidence going to the, the juniors to the seniors. Mm. Half was to right. Patrickson, 1369. Oh, well, that says watching anime. Pretty sure, pretty sure this is anime. Yeah, gaming. Okay. Devin Brooks' hobbies gaming, bowling, and watching anime. What's that? Oh, uh, cartoons in Japan. Okay, I'm, I'm not too old for that stuff. I need me. I'm too busy doing candle from bowling all the time. In the hole, it's a Paul Grant shot uh, and a half whisker. Oh, anime has got a whole world unto itself. I wonder if Corey, I wonder if Corey Lisi knows that. Bet you a buck many people in the room do, I'll be honest with Corey. you. Corey. They both get a nine. Uh, no, no. 44 half for Kevin, open half. Nine for Devin Brooks, 60 half. Yeah, yeah, no, so, no, 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 hold on. Corey, hold on. Seven, seven for 58. Corey here from Candlepin Corner. Corey, come here, buddy. Wait, 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 wait. That's not how you use a headset. No, no, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Take this microphone, will you, sir? All right, first of all, Corey, I'm, I'm not with, the, with these kids' things nowadays. Talk about that game this guy likes, Greg. See if Corey knows about it, first of all. That, that, uh, gaming bowling, he says he watches anime as well. You, you know what that is, right? Yeah. 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 I have no clue. It's based out of Japan. It's a cartoon style. It's uh, a lot of action stuff. I've got to get a life instead of candlepin bowling, right? <laughs> so uh, talk about your candlepin corner and, and your how they can subscribe to YouTube channel. And talk about your new skins program. You're doing Elite Lanes. Yeah, can mm. candlepin corner on YouTube. Um, don't want to interrupt the good bowling that's going on here. But, yeah, we good just sir. had the first two episodes come out, our pilot first two. And then uh, we'll have another roll-off. After this, we're going to announce the dates. End of, 
end of November, December time with the holidays. And our tape date is January 13th. So, uh, Lidl, Lidl Lanes, Nashville, right? Lidl Lanes, yes, sir. So hopefully uh, we get it. We got approached with by uh, Susie came up with the idea again, brought it back from the old 80s and 90s show, and it was a lot of fun. That first that first taping was a lot of fun. All right, Corey, why don't you run on the leaders for us while you're here, if you don't mind? All right, we That's get we're gonna, on a spare first. We're gonna outsource everything. We got Joey Lister in first, 536. Tim Susi second, 519. Brett Adams also with a 519. I don't know what the tiebreaker is there. Tie single, then Brett likely, second in second. Likely. Freddie Toffelmeyer in fourth, 517. Glenn Pinsent in, in fifth with a 512. And Mike McIntosh in sixth with a 508. I don't know how far you guys want to read. Uh, there's a couple more 500s. Yeah, we'll go with the five, Justin Waters, 506. And then Cole Fry, 502. Very good scores. Thank you so much, Corey. Absolutely. Thank you. So, oh, by the way, one more thing. We're going to see you in teams, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll be here. So I'll, I'm bowling the second shift today. You guys won't see me because I'm on the far lanes and then all the way to the end. But, yeah, the Team USA, Iron Workers, I think it's Local 7. You can tell on the back of my shirt. But yeah, yeah. Hey, I'll be I'll be here starting tomorrow. So uh, whenever my number gets called, we'll be up on the lanes. Fantastic pink shirt. Uh, we'll see you then. Thank Thanks, you. Greg. See you later. See you soon. I'll rustle that mic back into place for you all. Always good to cross promote. 10 and 7. Work together as a Caleb and Bowling community. Okay. Sean Bernard, 17 through 1 to 10, 27 through 2 in the fifth and final string. Yep, Shift that's right. one of two. Steve Poulin, Poulin, a 9 to 7, 16 through 2. Now our third string is Spread Eagle on the 9. Head pin, head strike. Good, good. 26 plus 2 through 3 for Steve Poulin. Steve could use that, Joel. That's good. Son of Mike Poulin, Hall of Fame eligible next time around. Look at this tough lead, 4-1 split. Because of the heat. Never mind. I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Not all the time, anyway. That's an eight box for Bernard. 35-3 in the final string of the match. Follow the Atlanta Canelpin singles tour all season long on the ACST Facebook page. Justin Waters, Waters World Class A champion from last year, Dan Esdale. Walter Millis, he's Class B champion. Jeff Riddle from Academy Lanes, Haverhill Mass Pub 125, Class C champion. And welcome those in Class D this year as well. In Maine, Matt Hoffmark Weber, an absolute match for a generation, a must see match on Kenneth Mullen Network or the ACST Facebook page. Mark Carrier, Mark Weber. You've got to see that match. You, never, you won't believe it. 19 strikes. There's a spare. On strike for Poulin, or rather for uh, Bernard. That's 45 in the ball through four. Poulin's second ball is one, so an eight on the strike. If that ball does nothing. No, I'll just go in the channel. Don't, don't 34 through three. Oh, that's right. They don't get trapped in the channel, you silly American. Not how that works. Mark Carey, Mark Webber, August 1st, 2023. A must-see match on Canada for Long Network. A match for a generation. 48 marks, 19 strikes combined, a one pin difference. Right down to the last ball. <laughs> Two great balls in Maine, Maine ACST finals. Okay, Corey ran off the top 10 scores, I believe, Greg? Uh, that's right, we stopped, we, we ran off at the 500s, basically. No, that's for, that's for three, that's not that's gonna do anything. Okay, I'm reading the wrong sheet. Yeah. I'm looking for 32 down, but they don't have like rank numbers, like right next to it. Okay, that's all right. That's in the channel, so it's eight. 42 through four. Yeah. At the moment, mid-110s is the current cut, it seems, but um, I, mean, I think it's about there. But we'll, we'll see. You know, there's this whole second shift of bowlers. Uh, average might creep up. What do you think? I, I see some people doing it in the chat already. Sound off. What do you think the cut's going to be? Remember, top 32 bowlers make it. That fill for Bernard is five. 15 makes 50. Three and a splash through pool and got it off the wall. Pip amused, but he's got a good half working. 52 and a ball. Bernard's shot. 2-4 goes across. That's an 8 box for 58. Good half as well. Back to the top of the order. It's 
Same lanes, remember? Everyone's just rotating one to the right every string. Justin Scally's on the right side. He's got a 72 half after going strike, spare, spare. His box six. Great splash. He's crossing over ever so slightly, but you get some forgiveness here off the walls. 6-10. These pins crumple in a heap for Summerson. He's got the one nine. Not as good a leave. It was wet out front there, but Scally's going to take aim at the other side of it. He's got a spare. His fourth mark. Summerton's also got wood way high up. Got the five pin. So that was eight on that spare, excuse me. So we now know it's a 63 half and a nine box for 72. This is not head to head, but Scally had that 72 a box ago. He can crack into possibly the 130s at this point. Once again, Greg, they picked the wrong raffle ticket again. Yeah, that's a real shame, that. Can't believe it. How come you can't get a refund? Yeah. I, when, when's the, I thought the customer's always right. Well, the, servi <laughs> no, the service is better up here. Apparently just not good enough for our our purposes. But <laughs> no, no, no. Strike bid nine. We're talking about getting the raffle tickets, people. Come on. <laughs> we're, I know we're entitled Americans, but come on. We're not going to. Not hardly. <laughs> not not us, not us. Scally, good bid there. Davy Summerton gets the shot. That's spare, the good For shot. Spare. 82 through six. That's three out of four. Then eight, 10, seven start, 25 through three. Uh, that's my math. Is that right? There's no, uh, I'm, I'm realizing I've made a bad math error here somewhere. Um, was it 10 before? Scally eight is 93. So it's a 10 for Summerton, it's 73, I guess. 73 through six. Or is that Hang spare? On, let me 83 and a ball through seven. Strike. Spare, oh, rather. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, we'll, get it, we'll get it fixed. Again, we're challenged here. We're way back in the bleachers, in a sense, in the DJ booth. And way, way back normally we are. We're probably like five times further back than we normally are, if not more. Yeah. And the scoreboard's very hard to read, too. Manual scores. Scally, good offer. I think I'm. Nice out. Good ball to go. What's confusing me is I, I wonder if Davies' scoreboard is like a little behind as well. Or, no, no, no. I'm. The shirt. And the wow envelope. Thanks, Aaron Fontaine. Buying a wow shirt 2.0. Oh, you got an 8 one cancer. I'll be right back. I'm going to get scores. All right. Thanks, Aaron Fontaine. All right, we're winding down here. Two more bowlers after this to wrap up our first two shifts today. Justin, a 4-2 split. Summerton, the Queen Borg, the Star Trek character, 7-9. Played by Jerry Ryan off a card in Star Trek. That's on a spare. Galley open. Aaron Fontaine putting fifty dollars in the Kansas Kansas pocket. Second ball will do fifty dollars today. Thank you very much for your generosity. It's all about the bowls and their relatives going through cancer treatments. Donations via Venmo anytime, twenty four seven. Candlepins for cancer.com. Candlepins number four. Cancer.com. So I guess I guess really it was only one off the entire time. Oh gosh. Davy crosses over, seven. And that 10 was 103. Okay. Six time world champion. That is something. Scally. Got it, legal block in the back. Throw the flag. Okay. Summerton picks it up. The spares working there. I can't. Matching spares in the 10th. On the extra ball, right in the nose again, a clipped wing eagle, minus one. So six is the fill. Nine fill for Summerton is bonus. Nice finish for both bowlers. 
What's the official score, Greg? Two nice strings. Again, we cannot see the scoreboard manually from here very clearly, so we have to go manually check it and put it on the screen here at home for you to watch. So I had it right, 124 for, Ju for Davey Summerton, Justin Scali, 125. Nice strength, both bowlers. There's a strike for Kevin Padgington. He's been bowling great. There we go, I'll get Open that. Open first half in this string, now a strike back on track, 54 plus two through six. From old Canada, Moncton, New Brunswick. Devin Brooks on lane 13. Seven, 65 through six on Candlepin Bowling Network. Take a look at the stats here. After this string, we have one more set of bowlers after this, then we'll sign off, get ready for our second shift of two. Pass to fall, strike, but he got it. Another one. Crushing it here in Moncton. That's a double strike. It sure is. I told you, he throws a five or a six, it just doesn't matter. He comes back with more marks and just starts the deluge. That's a six oh, pin. Oh, what a shot there for Brooks. How about that? Six pin make, nice shot. Spare, 75 and a ball through seven. All right. I saw, I, 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 for some reason, every time I hit a button, and Internet Explorer wants to button edgewise. Uh, it's Microsoft Edge, which actually is a good browser. Thanksgiving's coming soon. Kevin Padgett would like an early turkey. He's going for three strikes in a row on lane 14. Some people mentioned turkey as three marks in a row, but three strikes would certainly take that one. For the triple, looks good. Oh, look at this, you're kidding me. Three, six, four goes down. Eight in the first double strike box. Nine drop for Brooks and his spare. 84th through seven. Also obligatory to mention that Thanksgiving's on a different day here. That's right. For another mark. Mm. Oh, just missed right. Nine just in the second double strike box. Goes from uh, No, 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 no. Type, Gregory. Jeez, nice spare, another Brooks. spare for Brooks. Back to back for him, four spares in the fifth. And Kevin nails it for a 10. He goes from 44 through five, no marks, to a double strike, 72 through six, 91 through seven, 101 through eight. <coughs> Excuse me, the power of the double strike. If you, if you want to cough, let me know. I can set your mic level down. I don't, everyone here at the mic rustling, I'm afraid. I'm all choked up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, <laughs> it is truly wonderful Elvis to be here. Elvis is all shook up. I'm all, I'm all choked up. Good atmosphere here, though. we got 20 lanes going. There's still a dozen 24. more lanes they could be using. Uh, yeah. 20, 20 right now. Yes, right. 24 lane facility. Got to have breakdown pairs. Patrick missed that chance. It wasn't easy anyway. I could use a breakdown after what happened in string one. Though. Oh, what a shot for a spare after the Worcester. Look at that. After a two fill, he's got three in a row. 96 to eight, 106 in the ball through nine. Four, make it five spares in the fifth. Another chance to fill big. Got a couple of those two fills, but. That lower to score, two two fills. Coming back strong, getting those marks. Patches in 10, 101 through eight, final two boxes, then one more group to wrap up our first of two shifts. Back in the pocket, strike, another one. Wow. After 145 fourth, coming back strong here in the second half. Three strikes in four boxes, how about that? Yeah, Brooks got a low fill, but this one's not his fault. He got the head pin straight through. And 111 nice. plus two in the 10th. got that woodworking. What a try, he got it! Incredible shot with the wood spare. Devin Brooks got four in a row. 111 through eight, 129. 121 of the ball in the 10th. Great ball here in Moncton. It's only day one in a sense. Yeah. Oh shoot. I'm Adjington back in the pocket. Nine. Oh, I, I'm a box behind. Shoot. Uh, I see. One ten. Then the strike. One twenty. One twenty working. Yeah. Sheesh. So one ten to nine. A strike. Almost a double again. Six fill. One twenty seven for Brooks. Let's add a stick to Padgett. Why not? There we go. Twenty more for one thirty. What a string again. 
Great ball by Kevin Padgington and Devin Brooks. 130-127. And that's how you finish up a strong, a 44 half to start. 130. 86 second half. What a funny game, Greg. Yeah, he'll enjoy watching that one back. And if you want to watch any of these strings back, go on to Candlepin Bowling Network or on Facebook and YouTube. Certainly for this tournament, sometimes we go one or the other, but for a tournament this big, we got to put it in both places. But on YouTube, it's in high definition. So you want to subscribe to YouTube channel, Candlepin Bowling Network, high definition. It's free. Just hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell so you're always notified of all the matches, especially when we get to the team's matches. That's going to be big. Look at this one, the 1 9. Oh, brutal. It's deep pulling. Yeah, one eight punched out. In fact, yeah. Out of all around, all around us, boys from New Hampshire. Yeah. The Dero's house, and that missed left. Well, now he's got the two on the left, so he's still got the parallel pins in front. That's going to make it tough to pin, but he could get the hay bale on the right side. Bernard ends up nine. And seven. Sixty-one through six. All right, I'm gonna be wrapping up if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah I got gotcha. you. Take your. After this match, thank you for watching this big game at Bowling. After this string is over, we'll sign off. Get ready for our second shift on a separate feed. Then after that, a, feed, a separate feed for our playoffs. Then World Tournament Teams Competition starts tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, 9 o'clock local time, Atlantic Time, Tuesday through Saturday, including the finals on Candlepin Bowling Network. Back to Greg Gouillard to wrap it up. Thanks so much. Uh, take that away before he rustles the mic again. You got the five-eight. <coughs> wow, I coughed into the mic. That's such an amateur era hour. Spin the wood. Oh, he could have taken the red line maybe, but that's tough when the wood is always out in front there. Steve Pullen's got the A-10. I'll, I'll get to that in just a second here. I want to call these boxes out and I'll get there. Yeah. Nine for Bernard, 76. You know, there was a discussion recently like, what other sports bowlers are into. Is Stephen Poole? Stephen Poulin's got a big list. He's got he's played football, basketball, baseball, golf, and tennis. Current, ho current hobbies, all those aforementioned sports, and also video games. They don't bally who the esports either, you know. Those people are oftentimes still in shape. Big hit. Bernard Strike, his third mark. Steve Poulin's got this one crossed over. He's got the six pin though. Got them all nicely tangled up. Beautiful pin action here in Moncton. You get them all as he gets a spare. Get a nice, powerful working ball in there, and you just tangle them all up in a heap almost like instantaneously. They're, it's like they're wired up. We wouldn't dare put strings on these pins, but sometimes it feels that way. But a really good shot. And this is the final string of this first shift here. The second shift will be starting in a moment. They're going to need time to warm up. That's a double strike for Bernard. Bullet's going to be happy when he looks up at triangle number six, six, nine, and ten. So, chance. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yes, that ten is going to tip over. 17 and another, 87 through eight. Spare out here. Ball abdicated his post. He wants to go take a look at the second shift, I think, just to. Yeah, feel free to hop on here. If you want, I should show you the, a little bit of what's going on here. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Need a hand, let me know. That's a big hit on the double strike. Not that working ball, but did, didn't dig it on the head pin. Uh, oh, gosh. I don't know if I can do that for you right this moment. I might be better off if I situate it later. Sorry. Bernard hit the 10, tips the 7. That's going to be 17 there. Bullen can't convert the uh, half Worcester punch out, so he's got that 2 fill for 99. And the last box. Oh, yeah, it's the last box anyway. 1 8. He drops it. 7 on that. And 9 in the box for the pair of them. See if I could just go over some scores real quick. So that was it. Second shift will start in just a moment. I'll go over some scores real quick. Uh, Steve Poulin had uh, 454 uh, prior, so working a little about 113 average here. 
Bernard, so he's going to end up. Oh, of course, I could just add, you know, 454. 553, 110 average or so. Sean Bernard had 470, now is 127 for 597, just shy of a 120 average. Let's see what else we got going on. David Summerton at 437, I had 124, is five for me. Come on. Yeah, Kevin Padgerton is a 608 after that 130. Sorry about that, the internet blipped out on us, but just as well. I think it's time to stop this stream and uh, transition over to the second one. So, end of this broadcast, please like or follow on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube so that you're always in the know about all our upcoming broadcasts. But I'll let you know that after a few minutes of warm-ups, we'll get started with Second Shift, and we'll click on when it's on. Until then, we will see you uh, then. Bye-bye for now.